It is time for the lantern right. Oh god, here we go. <laughs> Hello, I didn't even Sure, I didn't even start it, Paimon, but okay. <laughs> we'll take it. Huh? Ooh. What a pleasant surprise meeting you here. First person being oh. Zhongli. Why the pleasure is all mine. Ooh. As is the surprise, surely. It must be fate that brings us together in this place. How have you fared as of late? Everything's been go uh well, things have been going all right. <laughs> Setbacks are inevitable over the course of a long journey. If you wish to share what's troubling you, allow me to lend my ear. There is no need to shoulder all burdens by yourself. Thank you, Zhongli. You are too kind. What? No, you. So, Zhongli, are you here to listen to stories over tea again? I had originally planned to set out after this last round of tea. However... Uh -huh. However? I had planned to take a walk to Chingsa village and gather some nascent bamboo shoots, which are currently in season. Okay. A villager there once gave me a small sample, and they possessed a most excellent flavor. I've never had huh? bamboo shoots. Nascent bamboo shoots? Why can't you just use normal bamboo shoots instead? Wait, Paimon knows, because Zhongli prefers the finer things <laughs> in life, right? Of course. Okay, Mr. Particular, let me guess. Ahem. The nascent bamboo shoot has a uniquely tender texture and a delicate sweet taste that its normal cousin cannot match. <laughs> <laughs> oh, astute observation, Paimon. You know me well indeed. God damn it. <laughs> Lantern right is almost upon us, but besides the bamboo shoots, there are a few other items I have not yet procured from Director Hu's list. May I ask if you have already made arrangements for the days ahead? I have not. Uh, well, we were planning to use the opportunity to say hi to some of our friends, but before we were able to figure out a schedule, we ran into you. Well then. Might I invite you to imagine the sheer delight that is a soup cooked with the freshest nascent bamboo shoots in all the land? I'll try it. Generous cuts of pork belly and crisp, fragrant bamboo shoots placed together in the pot and left to simmer uh, slowly for half a day. I'm already drooling, dude. Uh, you're doing this on purpose, aren't you? Paimon's on to your plan. You just want to hoodwink us into fetching your bamboo for you. Huh? I've never seen the eyes like that. Mm. What? <laughs> Why, I assure you, I would do no such thing. I merely wish to inform you of the freshest, most succulent and flavorful bamboo shoots one could ever hope to taste. You... Ugh. Let's go, traveler. Paimon's taste buds can't take it anymore. Ready to go when you are. Collecting a few bamboo shoots shouldn't take too long. Paimon has got to get her hands on some of that soup. Such fine specimens are indeed well worth the excursion. Very well. I shall leave the bamboo shoots to you. Should you have the good fortune to find some, please share them with me as well. See? See? Paimon knew he was just bamboozling us. Well, you want to get it anyway. However, there is no need to rush. The streets of Liu will be bustling with visitors and filled with all manner of celebrations during the festive period. By all means, go wherever your interests lead you. The nascent bamboo shoots would be but a wonderful final touch to a most exceptional feast. What an honor it would be to savor them in the company of friends. I understand. We'll check, uh, we'll check in with you at the Wangcheng funeral parlor. We're heading out. Enjoy your walk, young Lee. <laughs> Take care now, you two. Hell yeah, dude. Now I want to try that soup. I've never had bamboo shoots. A thousand miles for an enigmatic tune. Hopefully someone's already here trying to steal them, though, so we can meet another person. Dude, I love Lantern, right? Oh! Oh, these are actual things. I don't know if... Enough. Let's head back. Help! Help! Did you hear that? Someone's calling for help. It's coming from over there. Yeah, yeah, why you sound like that? A short and slender figure rescues the drowning something. Are you okay? Oh. Did any water go down the wrong pipe? <coughs> oh, it's Marco. <laughs> I, I think I'm okay now. Thank you so much. That was scary. Well, at least you're all right. All thanks to your savior here. Oh, a little 
girl? Yeah, it's hey, Yao Yao. Everyone. My name is Yao Yao. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Oh, she's so cute. Yeah. She's so well mannered. Yeah, unlike some. My name's Paimon, and this is the traveler. Uh, greetings. <sighs> I'm Dvorak, a musician from Fontaine. Oh no. Oh, I'm gonna struggle with Fontaine names. I came through Stone Gate, intending to head towards Li Yue Harbor, but then I became captivated by the beautiful scenery, and before long, I was completely lost. Just now, I was so mesmerized by the waterfall that I slipped and fell into Yo, the water. Yo, the guitar did! If it weren't for Miss Yao Yao's help, I shudder to think what might have happened. It's alright, Mr. Dvorak. The splashing around the bottom of the waterfall means the stone path is always wet and slippy. You definitely have to be careful. Don't you kind of struggle with all names? No. But a name spelled like Next time you're exploring his, an I wouldn't put a J in there. Focus on what's right in front of you. Don't let your mind wander. As long as you watch your step, accidents like this won't happen anymore. Yes, ma'am. I understand. I'll remember to be more careful next time. Uh-huh, sure. You're telling me when you read this, you'd read it as Dvorak and not Dvorak? Because <laughs> ain't no way it is. <laughs> oh, he's hungry. Oh, are you hungry, sir? Oh, uh, I'll be fine. <laughs> Please, sir, it's quite all right. I was born and raised here in Liyue. It's only natural for me to extend my hospitality to any guests who are passing through. I expect you still have quite a long journey ahead of you. It's very important to keep your energy levels up. I still Aww. have some lotus flower crisps left in my backpack. Why don't we split them between the four of us? Aww, what a thoughtful kid. <laughs> she even has some for Paimon. No, she doesn't. Please say no. <laughs> You're welcome. God damn it. Yow, yow. You are too kind. Everyone save us some delicious lotus flower crisps as they enjoy the scenery. Mm, so tasty. If only there were more. More? You already had the something to be share. Having a healthy appetite is a good thing. It means Paimon's still growing. If I'd known I was going to run into you, I would have made a second batch. Oh. Hope you're taking notes, Traveler. This is how you treat your Paimon. Well. What do you think, sir? Are Leeway's snacks to your taste? I wonder if they're not sweet enough. No, no, they're perfect. Hell yeah. When I was traveling through Mondstadt, I had a chance to try one of their moon pies. It had a meat filling unlike these crisps. But apart from that, it seems like they follow a similar cooking process. Interesting. Both are delicious in their own way. The moon pie does As look for good. Fontaine's cooking, though. It's been a long time since I've had a taste of home. Sounds like you spend a lot of time on the road, huh? I do. It's part of my job. Mm. I'm one of the main organizers of the Iridescence Tour. Iridescence Tour? Iridescence Tour. Oh, I was like, wait, I've heard that. That's the that's where Barbara and 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 Zinyan and everyone. Oh God, okay, that sounds somewhat familiar. The Iridescence Tour is I one think. of the biggest music festivals in Fontaine. We're looking to expand, though. Our aim is to hold a festival in every nation. Okay, yeah. <laughs> At least all the main organizers share this goal. Unfortunately, it's a long story, so I'll spare you the details. But anyway, so the main reason I'm traveling all around to VAD is to promote our music festivals. But I have some personal reasons, too. Dvorak, why'd you look up at Celestia like that? Well, what are they? Just tell us already! Let me see. Well, to explain it in full, I'd have to start with a story from my ancestors. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Okay. Oh, I love listening to stories! Hell yeah! Bedtime mm -hmm. stories! Go to bed, yow yow! Okay, then I'll start from the beginning. Okay. The story goes that my ancestor, who was also a traveler, once slipped and fell into a lake during his travels. As he was sinking and gasping for breath, he heard a wondrous tune in the air. They say it was the most beautiful, moving melody he had ever heard. Even in that life and death moment, the ethereal music seized his full attention and almost made him forget the fact that he was drowning. Huh? When he finally came to, he found that he had already been brought ashore. Not too far from him stood an unfamiliar woman with an almost divine aura. Once she saw that he was no longer in danger, she left 
without a word. My ancestor tried to run after her to give us thanks, but although a mere dozen paces separated them, no matter how quickly he gave chase, he drew no closer and remained a dozen paces behind. This could be anyone. It could be a lot of different people, but the story sounds vaguely familiar. No, someone drowning in an ocean and they see a somewhat, uh, someone with a, with a somewhat like powerful aura that rescues them out of the water. Did, like Paimon was drowning, we pulled them up. It could mean Lumine. Uh, it could just be a random siren-esque kind of thing as well. It could be a lot of different things. In the end, all he could do was to bow in thanks to the woman as he watched her walk away towards the rivers and mountains. Unless the, the story changes Before at last, he twin. turned around and made his way home. Once he returned to Fontaine, he began to learn an instrument so that he could spread his story far and wide. A just bard. like the Bards. Hell yeah. After generations of retelling, embellishing, and dramatizing, people have come to think of that lady as something like a fairy. The story's become something of a local legend in Fontaine. It's ah. called The Lady Overlooking the Lake. Okay. People now say that if you go down to the lakeside and play an instrument, so long as you play a pleasing melody, you will hear a fairy lady who is hiding out of sight playing along with you. An Aranara. Wait, it actually could be. Not even capping here. If we get to Fontaine and there's a weird thing that we can play a tune next to and it and it's on that lyre. I mean, it could be an Aranara. A lady, lady Aranara. Wow. At its heart is a true story. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It may just be a legend to others, but for me, it's a real part of my family history. I wanted to find out the truth of this tale. So I decided to retrace my ancestor's steps and search for that lady's modern day descendants. Of course, there's no way of knowing where my ancestor fell into the lake all those years ago. True. So I always knew that the search would be akin to looking for a needle in a haystack. I've spent many years on the road now and I'm nowhere near as fit as I was in my youth. <sighs> the wish that I've spent half my life chasing after has now become something of an obsession. Well, I haven't lived half of my life yet. But still, I understand how you must feel. I'm in two! Yeah. It's like... Mm, imagine if you saved the center of a lotus flower crisp. Which is the best part, by the way. Because you wanted to eat it another day. But then suddenly, sploosh! It falls into the water, never to be seen again! <laughs> Paimon would definitely remember that for the rest of her life. Of course you would, Paimon. <laughs> There's no need to feel sorry for me. I've made some progress over the years. For example, I've concluded that the story must have taken place in Liyue. Oh. Oh, so you finally found a lead? Yes, in fact, that's an intriguing story in and of itself. I'd always known that Mondstadt is the city of song and freedom. But more recently, I heard that the animal Archon returned to Mondstadt for a festival in the fall and learned that he himself is a patron deity of music. So I prayed for the animal Archon's guidance in the Mondstadt Cathedral, and as soon as I set foot back outside the front gate, I noticed a cluster of leaves being blown in the wind further and further west towards Stone Gate. A friendly mm. local told me that this meant the wind was guiding me in the direction of Liyue. So I followed their advice and made my way here. That sells it then. It was Liyue. Right? You get it. I knew I'd find someone that agrees with me eventually. Okay. Mm. Are you sure? It sounds a bit too much like one of those fake legends <laughs> told by those treasure hoarder guys to scam gullible grannies from Chingsa Village. <laughs> Rex Lapis has returned to the world! <laughs> Just give me some incense and a little more towards the travel fees, and I will pass your gift on to the Lord of Geo, and ask him to keep you and your family safe and well, and so on and so on. Speaking of experience, yo-yo. Yeah, we... Uh, I have a lot of experience with deciphering omens and stuff. Mm-hmm. And anyway, you only got scammed if you handed over more of, right? Technically true. Actually, to express my gratitude, I did spend rather a lot of more on several bottles of fine wine, which I left at the Statues of the Seven along the way. God damn it. Oh dear. <sighs> well, how about this, ladies and gentlemen? Why don't I bring you all to Yujing Terrace to see Miss Ganyu? I don't know yeah, let's go see Ganyu. People, so I can't help you out much, <laughs> but Miss Ganyu and the Qixing know just about everything. Vet is getting lit off his body, dude. Oh my scams, god. They'll help you get your Mora back. 
And if the wind was telling the truth, and you want to keep looking for that lady's family, they'll be the best people to ask. That does sound like a good idea. But you've already helped me so much. Well, I was going to take some new medicinal herbs and plants I picked to miss on you anyway, so it's no trouble at all. You know what? It's been a minute since we saw Ganyu too. True. It should be nice to pay her a visit before Lantern, right? Then let's get moving. All right. Well, my sincere thanks to you all. I will never forget your kindness. Okay, everyone. Please follow me. <laughs> I'll oh. be your guide. Remember to watch where you're going, okay? Okay. Uh -oh. Paimon's out of a job. Eh, oh, well. Paimon will just be a cheerleader instead. That works. God. Oh no, does that mean she's gonna be loud though? What do what do you're walking so well? Oh my god, you're all doing such a great job at putting one foot in front of the other. I can't believe it. Oh look at it. Ah, it's my first time back at Lima Frothly. Oh the once a year celebration that just makes your heart smile. The lantern right. Wow. Liwe Harbor looks very different from when I came last. Looks beautiful, dude. It's almost as if I'm listening to the same melody, but with a richer timbre and new variations added. Well, we are here during Lantern Ride after all. It only comes once a year, so they always have a big celebration. Mm -hmm. It's fair to say that this time of year is when Liwe Harbor looks the prettiest. Agreed. What about you, Chet? I, I I think this version of Liwa Harbor is absolutely stunning. I love it. Great. Let's go and check it out. Especially at night. I can't wait to get into the city and see it all up close for myself. Oh, dude, with the lanterns too. The streets oh. are breathtaking. Yeah. Smiles and laughter everywhere I look. It's contagious. Am I leading him? I can almost feel the music in the air. Oh, hell yeah. I have the urge to start waving my conductor's baton. <laughs> I'm glad that you're enjoying the city. Like an actual conductor's baton, right? Because th don't be getting your conductor's baton out, out in public, Dvorak. Don't. That's that's. Mm. Okay. Hi, Zing in! Well, fancy meeting you all here. What a nice surprise! Hell yeah! Hello, Xinyan. Let me introduce some new friends. They are. Traveler Paimon and Mr. Dvorak, right? <laughs> I've known them all for quite a while. So you already know each other. <laughs> when I was last here to advertise a Lee West stop for the Iridescence Tour, Xin Yen was one of the few people willing to give me the time of day. Aww. Well, feels like I've been chasing this Iridescence Tour bandwagon halfway around the world, but I keep getting stood up. What's going on, Mr. Dvorak? Rude. Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry, Xin Yen. I've had a string of terrible luck recently, and every time we've tried to put on a show, something or other has come up to stop our plans from materializing. Oh. Is that right? Hmm, I guess it can't be helped. So, what brings you to Leoy Harbor at this time of year anyway? Thinking of putting on a music festival during the Lantern Rite celebrations? A Lantern Rite music festival? Yes, please! No, uh, I'm actually here on personal business this time. Oh, so no oh, oh, yeah, obviously. Music festival? No, we we still I have mean, one. That's not just up to me. We saw it in the Hosting trailer. The music festival <laughs> takes a lot of funding and personnel. Moreover, I've never worked with the Leeway authorities before. Even if I were to start putting something together right now, I think it'd be too rushed. Uh, well, we know someone in Leeway that has a lot of funding and personnel, both. Wait, but we're going to meet the Leeway teaching, aren't we? And they're the ones in charge. Uh-huh, that's right. Yeah. Miss Kuching and Miss Ningguang can make anything happen. 100%. You mean... What? Huh? <laughs> this is the perfect opportunity. Well, sure, it might not work out, but it can't hurt to bring it up as a suggestion. A Lantern Right Music Festival would be a huge hit and something different, but definitely a huge hit. That's the spirit. See, even the traveler agrees with me. Mr. Dvorak, don't let yourself be put off by the fact that a few things haven't worked out recently. As for the performers, I can put you in touch with some local artists. Oh, well, local? Wait. My friend Yunjin is a well-known opera singer in Liyue. Yunjin makes sense. And a commissioned song from the Yunhan Opera Troupe, we should be able to get something going. Oh my god, if we get like a whole song for this, that's going to be so cool, well, dude. What about you, Xinyan? 
Are you just going to sit this one out? Nah. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> what do you take me for? A guitarist. Let's if go. we actually managed to make the Iridescence Tour Lantern Rock Grand Concert a reality, you think I'd let anyone else perform the opening act? Mm -hmm. Wow! There's that rock and roll spirit! <laughs> oh, uh, say, I hope Bullock we get one. Hmm. Come on. Mm, okay. <laughs> I'll give it a shot. <laughs> but... <laughs> The opening act is not something to be chosen lightly, Shinya. Oh, so many hums. I will judge your work by the strictest of standards, so please make sure you are fully prepared. Are you kidding? I thought you'd never ask. Hell yeah. <laughs> Guess my shopping time's getting cut short. I'm gonna head back right away and start working on this. Yow yow, if you run into your senior on the way to the Chishang, please send her my regards. Okay, I promise I will. Good luck with your music, Shinya. You've got this, Shinyan! You got this, I believe. So about the senior of yours Shinyan mentioned just now. Is that anyone we know? Well, I yes, would... it's Shangling. Yeah, I was... She's mentioned oh. you two before. Shangling's always thinking about cooking. Whenever she gets scrapes or burns, she just leaves them to heal by themselves. Not again. She definitely needs someone around her to look after her. Shangling's not exactly a senior, though. I've looked out for her a lot too in the time you've known her. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Uh, I think I remember meeting Shangling. Wasn't she spying on a boar in a bush and Paimon scared it away, so she got mad that we scared away her food? <laughs> Okay, Zhengling, where? Madam Ping? Or oh, please don't forget to talk to Madam Ping. Oh, it's Master. Is it okay if I go and say hi to her? Wait, Madam Ping's the... Oh, calm down now, dear. I'm not about to run off anywhere. I'm not a bundle of energy like you. The Master. I haven't seen you in days, Master. I've missed you. Oh. oh, bless you, Yao Yao. That's cute. You do say the sweetest things. Ah, look who it is. Visiting friends during the lantern ride, are we? Greetings, Madame Ping. You're half right, Madame Ping. We were also trying to help out Mr. Dvorak over here. We were on our way to take him to see the Qixing. Uh, hello, ma'am. I am a musician from Fontaine and an organizer of the Iridescence Tour. I don't suppose you've heard of it. Master, Master, the Iridescence <laughs> Tour is a super famous music festival. Yeah, let's have one. <laughs> An old lady like me wouldn't know much about that sort of thing. A music festival, you say? It sounds terribly exciting. I thought she was just going to say it sounds terrible. Uh, if we could add some musical elements to Lantern Rite, or if we could organize a Lantern Rite music festival. Musical elements. Oh, right. Madam Bing, how would you feel about that? You're an elder of Liyue, and you know all about Liyue's cultural traditions. Hearing your thoughts would definitely help us figure out how best to approach it. Yeah. For example, do you think it might be a bit too modern, or is there any other issue? Why, not at all. Music pays homage to history and culture, and it can also be a bridge between different civilizations. Times change, and mm. the music enjoyed by the youngsters of today is... No doubt very different from the tunes I was accustomed to in <laughs> nah. my youth. <laughs> Nevertheless, all fine things in life can be appreciated. I like to imagine that there's a lot of different music into that and we haven't heard it all yet. And at some point we're going to get like serious heavy metal and rap and like full on hip hop and just everything. And so I look forward to it immensely. Hell yeah. Here, here. I do believe that, my own dear grandmother aside, you are the wisest old lady I've ever met. Cute. Oh, goodness gracious. You're all being suspiciously sweet today. Yao Yao, whatever have you been feeding them? Have you fed us those things to sweeten us up? Master, you're in such a great mood today. You're even cracking jokes with the rest of us. Oh, well... I'm sure you must have plenty to be getting on with. Yes, mm. run along now. Don't let me hold you up. Thanks, Madam Ping. We'll see you again soon. Everybody's just so happy and lighthearted in this event, dude. It's too good. Let me speak to you. You mustn't be afraid to try new things. If you never try, you'll never know. True. With your contribution, I'm sure this year's Lantern Rite will be a most spectacular one. 
I will take that advice. I am now going to eat a complete silk flower. Do you sell the moon here? <laughs> Is this person called Bai Zhao? Not quite Zhao, but not quite Bai Zhu. Okay. And when you meet with the Ministry of Civil Affairs, please remind them that the festivities are not an excuse to procrastinate their work. Understood, Miss Ganyu. I'll Hell take yeah. my leave now. Goodbye, Bai Zhao. Bye. Bye, Bai Zhao. Ganyu! Ganyu! Hello! What brings you here, Yao Yao? I've brought all the medicine you asked me to pick for you. Oh, and here's a pack of sweet flower seeds as well. Oh. Uh, also, also, these dried chingshin leaves make a great pot of tea that's very good for you. I know you've had a lot to deal with at work recently, but you shouldn't push yourself too hard. <laughs> if you're not careful, you'll end up falling asleep in the grass again. <laughs> well, this is weird. It's like a responsible younger sister talking to their disorganized older sister. Uh, <laughs> it kind of is. <clears throat> Fine when you're running your mouth again. Don't listen to her. But it kind of is. She's not wrong. Paimon's criticism is quite valid. Mm -hmm. I do have a tendency to neglect matters outside of work. And that's something I should improve on. Oh, my apologies. I don't believe we've been introduced. True. Ah, Paimon will do the honors. Paimon tells you about Mr. D Dvorak from how you met to his family history. You sh hmm. Same. Quite literally, yes, but it's not your fault, Paimon. It's Hoyaverse's fault for not adding a click to continue button on those screens. It's definitely an ambitious plan. If there's anything you didn't quite catch, Paimon's more than happy to go over it again. Huh. It may be a little difficult to make this happen. Oh? Oh? Well, the Lantern Rite is the most important festival of the year. Our celebrations must not only be visually spectacular, but also appeal to the tastes of Leoa citizens from all walks of life. First time that's happened in a while. The Iridescence Tour is relatively unknown in Leo. It's difficult to predict how a brand new show will be received. True. It would be quite risky for us to bet everything on this one music festival. Well, not everything, just a lot. <sighs> all very valid points. I completely understand. Therefore, we will not replace or cancel any of our pre-existing program. However, Do I will submit a proposal requesting to put the Iridescence Tour special performance as the final act of this year's festivities. Yes, that's what so we wanted! Live music will certainly add to the festive atmosphere on the night of the Lantern Rite. As for the venue... Hmm... Let's reserve a space at the docks. You know what would be even better though? Make it a Jade Chamber into one big stage and everybody watches from the docks. Or from somewhere. Maybe it's too far away, actually. Never mind. So we're not stealing anyone's thunder, but we will end the night on a high note. Yes. My thoughts precisely. Hell yeah. Now I, I just like need that. to take some time to give this proposal some polish. Okay. As long as I clearly lay out the pros and cons and highlight the key points of the proposal, given that Ping and the Traveler have both given the idea their blessing, I'm confident that Qixing will be sure to give it serious consideration. You know, I'm so still to this day, like, super, super curious as to why the... Tr I mean, I kind of get it. I was going to say as to why the Traveler's opinion matters so much. What, like, what right the Traveler has to give their blessing along with Madame Ping over people like, you know, Zhongli or or a lot of the other characters. But uh, but I guess it makes sense since we did see... We literally saved the harbor. Yeah, along with a lot of other people, including Zhao, including Zhongli, including Kachi, Like, you know, uh, including a lot of other people. I don't know. Mr. Dvorak, I will need to discuss oh, no. with you the number of musicians who will be coming to Leo, as well as their catering and accommodation requirements. Oh, yes, certainly. Let's step to the side and discuss further. I just stubbed my toe. As soon as there's work to do, Ganyu's as diligent as ever. Shut up, Paimon. I couldn't agree more. Oh, good job. You're cute. Master oh, once said that everyone has things that they are good at and things that they are less good at. So, with that in mind, Ganyu shouldn't feel compelled to become perfect at absolutely everything. I'm good at taking care of people, so that can be left to me. Wow. Okay, fair. Hey, Yo-Yo, 
Can you take care of Paimon too? <laughs> Paimon's getting hungry again. Stop taking advantage. Paimon, you try to freeload again. I'm afraid my backpack's empty now. But if you let me know what you like, I can bring you some of your favorite dishes next time we meet. Apart from lotus flower crisps, what else do you like? Anything Everything. And anything that's made from slimes. Yeah, that's still such a strange thing to say to someone you've just met. <laughs> Here's what I've drafted so far. Anything else you want to add? No, this is excellent. I'm racking my brains, but I don't think you've missed a single thing. She is very clever. Perfect. Then we'll leave it as is. I'll go make an official copy. Oh, perfect timing. We were just wrapping up our discussion here. That was quick. Not at all. Every second counts for a complex proposal such as this. I will inform the Qixing of this development immediately. Please give me a moment to pass on the message. Okay. Yao Yao, thank you for bringing my herbs. I will make sure to take them. Mm -hmm. Remember to make tea from them first, Ganyu. You mustn't just chew them raw. Uh, I... I will. Oh. Okay, I should be getting back. If Yao Yao stays out for too long, Mom and Dad will be worried sick. Who is Mom and Everyone, Dad? I'm sure that the music festival will go off without a hitch, so don't worry. And in case I don't see you before, I wish you all a very happy Lantern Rite. Happy Lantern Rite, but we Thank better you, see you again. Yo. Happy Lantern Rite to you, too. We should go get dinner together sometime! Agreed! <laughs> so loud. Agreed! Stay put and wait for two hours. What, like, just... just here? That lady I just talked to, Ganyu, she really thinks of everything. True. It got me wondering. Could it be that all our failed attempts so far have been down to our failure to properly prepare for different contingencies? No. Anyway. <laughs> yes. I think uh, I think that is very true. After a short wait, Kaching and Ganyu arrive at the square in front of Yunjin Terrace. Greetings, I think that's it. Traveler, Yunjin Paimon, Terrace? and Mr. Dvorak. Call me Kaching. Ganyu <laughs> has brought me up to speed on everything. I'll get straight to the point. Hell yeah. The Qixing have approved Ganyu's proposal. Over the next few days, I will be working with Mr. Dvorak on behalf of the Qixing to facilitate the organization of this concert. It's Electro Al Yay! That's awesome! Unbelievably efficient. Kaching strikes again. <laughs> Please. The Qixing have a duty to deal with matters such as these. We have merely moved things forward to the next step. On a more personal note, I am an avid supporter of all things new and innovative. Hell yeah. As such, it is my privilege to work with you on this exciting project. Thank you so much, Kuching. I'd become quite discouraged after our recent failures and was expecting the same outcome once again, so I didn't dare to get my hopes up. <sighs> Never in my wildest dreams could I have imagined this going so smoothly. It's like a dream come true. True. Right. Time for me to call in the performers. To stage a concert at a high-profile event like this is a rare opportunity. We'll make sure it's a night to remember. Yes! Our music band's finally getting fired up! Hell yeah, I want to hear yes, him play. Indeed. I know exactly what I'm doing from here. Mm -hmm. For a musician, music will always be the language they are most fluent in. What about your ancestor? That fair... Oh no, the fair lady, yeah. Oh, that. Well, that can wait for another time. Oh. Oh? Can you? What's wrong? They told me all about Mr. Dvorak's situation, but I was so engrossed in drafting the proposal that I forgot all about it. Oh, that's quite all right. I, I don't even know what the person I'm trying to find looks like, so it was always going to be a long shot. Uh, don't worry about me, Ganyu. Uh, your time and energy are needed elsewhere. I, I'm sure you already have plenty to deal with between this concert and everything else going on during the Lantern Rite. Thanks. It was just that I had a few initial thoughts when I heard your story. For instance, I wonder if this lady your ancestor met might have been an adeptus. What do you think? Definitely possible, but we don't have enough information yet. To tell you the truth, Mr. Dvorak, I am somewhat related to the adepti myself. Mm -hmm. I am part human and part Chilin. The Chilin is an illuminated beast. I know how important your quest to get in touch with your roots must be to you, because I've been there myself before, Aww. trying to find out where I belonged. 
Did you say the Adepti? And you're illuminated beast? Yeah. <laughs> that is kind of a lot to just drop on the poor dude. <laughs> are you telling me all the rumors of the Li Yue Adepti are real? So it's not just artistic license? Mm hmm. You bet they're real. Trying to track them down is tough, though. Like Julian Karst itself. There's nothing specifically stopping you from going there, but getting in and out of there is quite an ordeal. Yes. Anyway, if you're looking to uncover a lost melody or shine light on a forgotten aspect of Leo's cultural history, I'm probably not the best person to ask. That's fair, though. But if it's a person you're looking for, then I just might be able to help. I see. I think I understand the situation now. In that case, Ganyu, shall we divide the work between us? Good idea. Yes, that was also my thought. Great. So Mr. Dvorak and I will concentrate on things here in the city to make sure the concert goes according to plan. In the meantime, Ganyu will reach out to our network and try to find the person he's looking for. How's your workload at the moment? Will you be able to make time? I can probably get through everything in two days. Ooh. As long as I don't sleep. No. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean as long as I don't sleep? God damn Even it, Even for someone with illuminated beast blood in their veins, working for such an extended period without a break will take its toll on your health. Yeah. Somehow sleep. Somehow not sound persuasive coming from Kuchi. Also true. Dude, they're both as bad as Yet each other. three moons from the start, he who returns is not he that departs. What? Be it but three moons from the start, he who returns is not he that departs. The hell does that mean? Hmm. Even I know the importance of maintaining a healthy work-life balance. In that case, three days. It was a three right. moons mention, but I what does that mean? That. If you have the time, would you join me for this search? You're well known to many of the Adepti and respected among the people. I'll feel much more at ease with your company. Of course. Okay, then let's meet back here in three days. Watch this space, Mr. Dvorak. We'll get to the bottom of this. You're all so helpful and kind. I, I really... I just... Uh... Just think. Imagine if we found the Adeptus Lady or one of her descendants and got them to come to the performance. Wouldn't that be amazing? It would be pretty damn cool. A happy reunion. And that's what if... exactly what this festival's all about! What if it was a young Madam Ping? I'm sure the wind that guided you here feels the same way. You're right. Okay, I'm gonna pull out all the stops to make this lantern ride a true extravaganza. We should probably get going. Mr. Dvorak, could you come with me to confirm the site? Woo! We're coming to you! Hmm. Interesting. I was wondering, what are your thoughts on music? What does it mean to you? <laughs> uh, music sounds nice? <laughs> <laughs> Truth be told, the question of what music means to people is one that I've been pondering for quite some time. Oh, really? Let's revisit this question after the concert. Okay. Part of me wishes it was like this all the time, but then it'd lose the charm, I think. So I'm kind of glad that it's once a year, but this once a year just makes you appreciate how beautiful it is. Oh God, it's so nice, dude. So nice. So nice. Uh, Bywen. Bywen, what is it? You good? Lady Ningguang's orders. I've been gathering intelligence outside of the city with the goal of uncovering and dispatching any trouble ahead of the festival. I am told that a strange melody was heard somewhere along the coast. I was wary of investigating further on my own, so I was just on my way to report this incident to Lady Ningguang. Mm. But I'm worried that if we don't act right away, we may miss the window of opportunity to take appropriate action. I understand. In that case, I... Let us handle this one. Yeah, Kuching. You're busy enough as it is. There's a ton of different things in the city that needs your attention. Very true. Leave it to us. Don't worry, whatever it is, we'll definitely be able to handle it. Uh, well, he will handle it. <laughs> with the traveler on the case, this is good as dealt with. Well, hopefully. Thank you. This will be a great help. 
I will inform Lady Ningguang about the situation. Once it's resolved, please come and find me again at Yujing Terrace and let me know. Okay. Do <laughs> and say hi to Ningguang for us. Yeah, I'm down. My thanks, too. Stay safe and come back as soon as you're finished. Good luck. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right, where the hell is you, dude? Go to the place Bywin mentioned. Where are you? Paimon finally acknowledged she doesn't do anything. Hey, she does a lot. She eats so much. Never, never say she doesn't do anything. She does a lot. Never said it was helpful, but she does do a lot. Bywin said the strange tomb is coming from around here, right? Mm-hmm. But Paimon doesn't hear anything. There doesn't seem to be a soul in... I was just wondering who in their right mind would come out to a place like this. Ooh, ooh, so, hello! It's you two. Yeon! <sighs> How'd you sneak up on us like that? You nearly gave Paimon a heart attack! You look pretty alive to me. Can't have spooked you that bad. True, not that bad. You... you... Uh, fair enough. <laughs> you know anything about the strange music? <laughs> ah, you're here for that too? Saves me a bit of explaining. Probably a lot of explaining. Come with me. I've already reconned the perimeter, so we should be safe. Okay, sweet. God, it's been so long since we've even heard her voice, did. My <laughs> God. Investigate the trail. Hmm. The stuff by the door is in pretty good condition, though. It can't have been too long ago that someone was last living here. Hmm. Inside? This place is completely empty. There's nothing valuable left here at all. Interesting. Are the door? The doors and windows are all fine. So there definitely wasn't a break in. Everything is fine, dude. Yay, Lan. <laughs> Wait, what? Yay, Lan? Oh, yeah, Lan. There you go. It's because I called it Yay, Lan. How strange. It looks like it's been looted, except for the fact that there's no sign of a struggle. True. The bad guys could have sneaked in while the owner was gone, but... Then how do you explain why the door and windows are intact? Seems you've done a pretty thorough inspection. So, any theories on what might have happened here? Yaylon, you didn't hide some of the evidence from us on purpose, did you? Why would I make this more difficult for you? We're on the same side here. True. Okay, well... <coughs> Paimon gives up then. Paimon's got nothing. For once? What about you? Give up as well? It's difficult to theorize with so little evidence, or it must have something to do with that me Oh, it must have something to do with what is that melody? Your instincts are pretty good. Thanks. Hmm. Or perhaps it's not instinct. The strange melody is one of the few pieces of information you have available, after all. Also true. Let me share a folk story with you. Oh god, okay. A long time ago, there used to be a group of bandits in the Liyue countryside who would sound a horn every time they were about to raid a village. Okay. But it wasn't a rallying cry to rouse their fellow men. It was a disconcerting tune, meant to intimidate the weak and warn them of their impending doom. Jesus. To escape with their lives, the villagers would abandon their homes and flee overnight, taking only their most valuable belongings with them. Everything else was left behind. The bandits were eventually brought to justice, but the fear and trauma remained in the villagers' hearts. Whenever they heard that melody, they would feel like their lives were in danger once again, and flee immediately. God damn. The culprit of this crime exploited that very fear to get access to this house without having to force their way in. Whew. That's quite the story. The victims obviously will have gotten quite a fright, but at least they won't be in any great danger. The important thing now is to find this copycat criminal. If we use Elemental Sight, we could follow the tracks. On any other day, that'd probably be a good idea. Unfortunately, it's not going to work today. Why? Take a look around and you'll see what I mean. This criminal is clearly well-versed both in using music to commit crimes and in making a clean getaway. Not only did they stay off the muddy road to avoid leaving footprints, it looks like they were also careful not to bring any gadgets with so much as a trace of elemental energy. Evidently, <sighs> they were intent on keeping even the most experienced investigators off their trail. They smart, Unfortunately smart. Unfortunately for them... I'm one of the best trackers in the business. They're not about to get away with their little scheme on my watch. I hope it's not Fontaine, guy. So basically, if we want to find the culprit, we just need to follow you on. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, let's just follow your line, dude. I don't know. Dude. I, 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 have no, I have no idea at this point. Oh? Mm -hmm. As long as you can keep up. Oh. 
Since the culprit's trying to be cautious and low risk, I'll bet they left through an area with some vegetation for cover, but not so much that it would slow them down. Interesting. Yo, she's smart. Oh my god, hello. She's very smart. I'm following. <laughs> Sorry, her jacket looks funny when she runs. It looks like she's flailing her arms behind her. <laughs> oh, keep running. <laughs> she's doing the the, the 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 These tracks are superficial, arm run. But they definitely didn't occur naturally. Okay. Something heavy was being dragged this way, meaning we're headed in the right direction. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, let's get huh. Oh, more tracks, you land. Increased. Normally, people carrying a heavy load slow down as their journey goes on and they start to tire. Whatever's motivating them to speed up must be psychological. For instance, reaching the home stretch. Ooh, so we're close. Keep going. No shot, they only ran this far, though. I'm not being funny, but it's not very far if this is home and they tried robbing that place. It's it's very, very close, actually. Big tracks, Yolan. Don't miss them. Don't miss them. Keep following. Keep following. No, you go the wrong way. You go... What if they want to play music with us? Let's round them up. Okay. Well, hello there, treasure hoarders. It's time hey. to punish. Who are you? Where did you come from? Uh, we're the devils. Hmm. The evidence is conclusive. Okay. Confess, and we'll go easy on you. My patience is running low, so why don't you do us both a favor, hmm? Oh, God. Are you kidding me? You think I'm scared of you? Perhaps not, but you should be. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh, yeah, baby. Quietly now. Woo! And another one. Gotcha. Gotcha. Pew! Ah, uh, kabow! Hell yeah. Mercy, have mercy. No, I want to play her oh, more. It's a little late for that. I've come this far. I might as well finish the job. Kill? I surrender. I surrender, please. I'll do whatever you say. Please have mercy. <laughs> Tell us everything. Everything. Have one chance. And I'm warning you. Don't make me ask twice. Oh, Jesus. I won't. I swear. Um, you know, so... Lantern Rite's nearly here, and like a lot of people, I wanted to buy a few nice things. Uh-huh. I know I'm with the treasure hoarders and everything, but I don't really have any kind of experience with robbing people and whatnot. So I, uh, I don't have the guts to break into somebody's house. Wow, you're really going to complain to us about that? No, not at all. I'm just telling it how it is. Mm. Okay, continue. More? I racked my brains trying to think of what I could do. And eventually, I remembered something from back when I was a kid. The bandits would blow their horn, and my grandma would grab us kids and run. I remember the tune, so I... I figured I'd try it for myself. I mean, just to see what would happen. At first, anyway, I seriously didn't expect that family to pack up and leave. But they did. And they just left all their stuff right there for the taking. It was too easy. I just... I couldn't resist. It was completely wrong of me. I know that now. I'll return everything that I took. It's all still in perfect condition. And will be like it was never gone. Please, give me a chance, huh? Hmm. Let me make it right. I kind of like give him a, chance, a little huh? bit. Sounds to me like you'd rather strike some kind of a deal than spend lantern right behind bars. Yeah. Yes. I understand. Yes. Come on, give him a deal, you know I guess. A bargain, I'll give you that. It's just a pity that you didn't confess at the first opportunity. Oh, true. He did you attack. You take a walk with me. Yeah, Once he did we've attack. Returned the goods. We'll find the owner of the house, and you can apologize to them in person. After that, I'll escort you to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You know, Jesus. as a former victim of this kind of crime yourself, I doubt anyone understands the fear you inflicted quite as well as you do. Mm -hmm. Does your greed matter more to you than your fear? More to the point, if you can play a tune from memory, don't you think you should be capable of making an honest living? You mean... What? Wait, what? <laughs> That's enough hints for you. You'll have plenty of time to reflect on all of this yourself. 
There's not much left to wrap up, so I'll take it from here. Guess this is where I'll say goodbye. Sure. Well done, Yelan. Hmm. Hmm. What is it? Is there something else? There's always something else. I'm still not sure how you first got your hands on this information. So play it safe when you get back. Don't mention to anyone that you ran into me out here. How did she get the information? You helped a lot with the investigation and arrest anyway, so it's perfectly fair for you to get all the credit. Just take it. It works better for me, too. See you when I see you. And happy lantern right. That was very close. You go very close. Such a pro at this. With her taking it from here, it's as good as resolved. Yep, agreed. Whoosh. Random event, a strange melody, complete. Excuse me, Paimon, did you just break the fourth wall? Also, very, are, are, are you trapping us in this simulation? Although, it's kind of a shame that we never got that treasure hoarder guy to play the melody again. Mm, I'm quite curious myself. Right? How could anyone not be? When we were chatting with Mr. Dvorak, music seemed like such a positive thing. True. And most music is, right? It can help us relax, feel all warm and fuzzy, recall happy memories, or even just think happy thoughts. I would never imagine that music could be used to commit crimes. Comes down to the ill will of the user. Their bad deeds influence the emotions associated with the music. Oh, really? Huh. Makes sense. <gasps> Paimon's musical understanding improves again. Well, anyway, now that everything's resolved, let's get back to Leo at Harbor. Paimon's still waiting for us with our random event rewards. Hmm. Hell yeah. That's great news. Oh, please wait here a moment, if you would be so kind. Lady Ning Wang instructed me to advise her upon your return. Pog, we get to see Ning Wang. Bai Wen hurries off. Uh oh. Here she is, dude. Oh my, my goodness. To both of you. Hello. A long time no see. Has been a while, like a year. You don't need to be so formal with us, Ning Wang. We've known each other for a long time. <laughs> you must be super busy with all the preparations for Lantern Rite. Don't mind us. On the contrary, I think it is those that I have known longest to whom I should extend the greatest courtesies. Okay. Alas, on a different day, I would invite both of you inside for some tea and a brief respite from your travels. But you're quite right. Trivial matters aside, there's no escaping the fact that we have a grand concert to organize. Once the performance itself is over... We'll then need to invite the representatives of the Iridescence Tour for a discussion on future collaboration opportunities. The financing arrangements alone could well entail many rounds of discussion. Sounds like a different... This is going to sound really weird. Sounds like a different microphone. Or recording setup. It sounds kind of tinny compared to usual, I think. Simply put, there will always be work to do. Whoa. You're already thinking that far ahead? <laughs> well... We can discuss more current affairs if you'd prefer. Hmm. I trust you saw this year's Ming Shao Lantern at the docks when you arrived at the city? Yeah, it looked like a goose. Which adeptus is it modeled on this time? Better mic and editing? I don't think she sounds bad, but I think it sounds worse than before, no? Am I mishearing this? I don't know, it just sounds tinny. They started utilizing the DSer. -er. Yeah, yeah, but it's like they've removed the bass from the voice and it's just, uh, like, it's just, it's just very tinny, like speaking into a tin can. Seagazer. I believe you're familiar with the name. Legend hmm. holds that he was free spirited and easygoing. People described him as a cheerful soul and a loyal friend. Uh, it's been too long, I can't seem to recall. On this marvelous lantern right, we pray that the fallen heroes may be guided home. If the sound of music can flow like the rivers and streams into every corner of the land, hmm. perhaps the souls of those who have gone before us will hear the song of a new era. I wonder whether the melodies will be to their liking. Oh, they're gonna love them! I'm sure of it! At least... If the guy you mentioned is anything go by, the Adepti and heroes of the past sound like a positive and free spirited cheerful bunch. True. They're sure to be open to new music. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's hope so. Let's. I heard that you'll be going on a search with Ganyu to find the descendants of a fairy lady from a Fontaine <laughs> legend. <laughs> yes, the fairy I'm sure lady. This quest to uncover the truth behind an ancient story will turn into a most charming tale. Do share it with me, won't you? Absolutely. Oh, 
My bad. Couldn't bear to miss out. Uh, oh, that was part one? Oh my god. A thousand miles for an enigmatic time. Holy. I didn't think that'd be part one already. Day two. Let's go. Ganyu, teach me the ways of the Lantern Rite Festival. Day two. I'm going to plunge on you and it'll be funny. Maybe. Oh, she looks upset. Oh, she's asleep. Is she asleep? Can you? <laughs> Can you? God damn it. Greetings, Traveler and Paimon. Uh, what time is it? Bedtime. Go to sleep. Are you okay, Ganyu? You were nodding off there. Didn't you sleep well last night? Over oh, the past two days? Uh, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Let's discuss the matter at hand. Since last time, I've been thinking a lot about the story Paimon told me. Okay. In essence, someone rescued a drowning man and performed some music. If that were all there was to it, it could have been many people, human or adeptus. True. But the tune was allegedly so wonderful that the drowning man forgot about everything else, even his own impending death, and only came to his senses after being brought to shore. Okay. Perhaps there was an adeptal power at work in that music that he, as a mortal, could not perceive. Or perhaps he sensed a power surrounding him, but lacked the words to describe it, not knowing where it came from. Either way, if this part of the story is true, then the rescuer has to have been an adeptus. You really so? But this story is all the way from Fontaine. Isn't this a bit of a long shot? Also, Paimon's really curious about how people from Fontaine think this fairy lady looked. Maybe they gave her horns. Oh my god, maybe it was Ganyu. Then she looked just like Ganyu. <laughs> hmm. Guess that does technically make sense. Actually, Ganyu, if you had to save a drowning person, how would you go about it? You have a bell, but that's more like for a goat. Huh? Me? <laughs> yes, you. Um, well, I'd get them to the shore, and then I'd probably hide behind a tree and watch them for a while. Once I was sure that they were going to be okay, I'd slip away without a sound. Hmm, so cute. Got it. So basically, Ganyu's the type of person who doesn't like taking credit for her good deeds. No, it's not like that. I'm just not very good at explaining things. And I also find it really awkward accepting other people's gratitude. Well, what if this adeptus in the story had a similar attitude? That would explain why she just left without saying a word. True. She was probably thinking something like, <clears throat> One was merely passing by and saw fit to address this egregious disruption to one's graceful zithering at once. <laughs> you may keep your thanks to yourself. Jesus. Okay, Paimon. That was good. That was actually a very good impression of Cloud Retainer, Paimon. That was good. As far as I'm aware, Cloud Retainer isn't the most musically gifted. Still, we can't completely rule her out just yet. Um, if we set off now, we could head to Mount Outsung and ask her about it. You'll okay. be able to confirm either way if it's her, and I can... Visit um, her. I've been say in the harbor for so long now that I'm just not as familiar with the Adepti anymore. Oh. If there's anything we want to know about them, she's the best person to ask. Sounds great! And we're pretty close with Cloud Retainer by now, so we probably don't even need to bring her food this time, right? I've prepared a gift for her to mark the festival, just in case. However... You still have some reservations? Um, Cloud Retainer spends most of her days studying mechanisms in her abode. She's on her own so much of the time that the moment she has someone to chat with, she just... Doesn't Never stop mind. talking. <laughs> I promised I'd help Mr. Dvorak, and now that I've made the contract, I can't be having second thoughts. Traveler, Paimon, let's set off for Cloud Retainer's abode. Oh no. Seems like this is a tough decision for Ganyu, but she's made up her mind now. Paimon gets why she'd be so anxious. Hmm. Okay, how about this? If Cloud Retainer tries to start telling stories about her again this year, we should pipe up and change the topic. Wait, uh, did she leave already? No, but it's fun. Oh, Daniel, it's, it's fun to hear the stories, dude. It's so fun. It's cute. A single harmony for an irreplaceable soul. Aw. I like the name of this one, too. It's pretty cute. Oh, Paimon's so tired from trying to keep up. <laughs> Don't either of you need to take any breaks? 
You can fly and teleport. I can't believe it. Cloud Retainer is not here. Huh? huh? Did we miss her? She doesn't like to travel. So in the past, it's always been the other Adepti who come to visit her during the festivals. <clears throat> uh, could she be busy with something else right now? True. Now that I think about it, Cloud Retainer would be quite capable of taking care of anything on her own. There's no need to worry about her. Since she's not here, I guess the next step is to check all the other Adepti abodes, one by one. Uh-oh. Will it involve a lot more traveling? Hmm. <laughs> um. You shouldn't oh, be tight. Hey, you can flow and teleport and stuff. Go on, and just Tama. disappear. Our goal here is to find the Adeptus that helped Dvorak's ancestor, right? Yes. We can't hear any music right now, but if she's really as nice as the story suggests, she'd definitely come to help anyone who was drowning, right? Mm hmm. Yes, I think that's fair to say. So, all we have to do is get the traveler to pretend to fall into the water, and the Adeptus will come to the rescue! If you're so sure, why don't you try? Yeah, we'll have a repeat of the start of the game, Paimon. You know perfectly well that Paimon can't swim! <laughs> Paimon would sink like a rock! I just think it's a bad idea, because I can give it a try. <laughs> You trying to fucking kill me, dude? Uh, oh, over, over here? It's a tiny little pool. Okay, it's not gonna work. <laughs> it's not gonna work. Help! Help! Look at his legs. I forgot I actually had stamina. Shit. I forgot that I actually had stamina, dude. Okay, let's let's take two on that one. Let's take two on that one. Someone carries you ashore so quickly you don't catch you with Zhao? And shit. How do you feel right now? I well I drowned, so not great. Uh Shenha and the Conqueror of Demons. Uh, why don't you say something? <sighs> Make Paimon explain it. <clears throat> okay, fine. Paimon will explain. So edgy and Ian. We're looking for an Adeptus who's good at being a lifeguard and playing music. But if the Adepti aren't going to stay home, then how are we supposed to find them? It wasn't me. Huh? Uh, yeah, so this Adeptus is most likely a woman. And I am not an Adeptus. True. As you both already know. Traveler and Paimon. Come back, Shedha, please. We need more of you, and we also need another banner. I am not going to pull for any more of you because I got lucky enough to get C1, but I know a lot of people really want you, so you should come back. <sighs> okay. So this is Paimon's fault. Yes. No way Paimon would have suggested this idea if she'd known how awkward this was going to be. Uh, I'm fine. Sorry for troubling you both. <sighs> Glad you're okay. <clears throat> you leave it already, Zhao? <clears throat> as far as I know. The one you seek is no Yaksha. And one last thing. <gasps> How cool would that be, though, if it was the Hydro Yaksha and she's actually not dead and she's cool and comes back and hot? Your actions here caused others a great deal of worry. Do not repeat them again in the future. Okay. As ever, the Conqueror of Demons comes and goes, just like the wind. Enters, laments, leaves, doesn't elaborate. Right. I... Didn't dare to say a word just now. How's your training going, Shenha? Have you made any plans for Lantern Rite? We could spend it together in Liyua Harbor if you'd like. Oh, I had planned to spend the festival with Master this year. Ooh. However. She going to AWOL. Oh, speaking of Cloud Retainer, when did you see her last? Earlier this morning. She set off for Mount Hulao at dawn. I noticed she was using an adeptus art of some kind to protect a mechanism that looked like a boiler. Hmm. Maybe it was a gift for Mountain Shaper. I did not inquire. Uh, a boiler? So we just missed her. Please excuse me for a moment. I think I'll leave the gift in her abode. Sure. Thank you. Got you. A boiler, huh? Interesting. It sounds like Ganyu and Shenha have gotten a lot closer recently. Yeah, it's cute. Yes. 
During the summer and winter, I continue to train with Master. In the other months of the year, I have been learning to adapt to human life in Leeway Harbor. Well, we have never seen you again. accommodations for me in the city, and also recommended several work positions for me. But when I try to blend in by referring to her as Miss Ganyu or Lady Ganyu, like the others, she says I mustn't address her like that. Okay, I mean, it makes sense. Sometimes I'm supposed to copy other people. Sometimes I'm not. It's a little difficult to keep track of everything. Ganyu just doesn't want you to be too court courteous around her. Ganyu gets embarrassed when people call her Lady Ganyu. Yeah, she does. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> Noted. She's going to do it on purpose now, so Pog. you came looking for Master today because you wanted to ask her about the Mystery Adeptus. Is that right? Yes. Indeed, it is. Oh, speaking of that, have you ever heard any music while out training in the mountains? Music? What is that? It goes like... Uh, <laughs> it's... Uh, a kind of a happy or relaxing sound. Or... Uh, a nerve-wracking sound, or even a terrifying one. Oh God, that's such a terrible explanation, okay, dude. Done. I also left her a note so that she knows where to find us. We won't miss her again. Yay! That's really helpful. Thanks. We were just talking about this thing called music, and based on Paimon's description, I do believe I hear it every day. Please uh, it's just gonna be like the Ooh, wind blowing yeah, in the trees or something, yeah, dude. I, it's it's not gonna be. You don't get music from that description. There's no way. It's it's gotta just be like wind whistling or something. Ooh, okay. This is the place. I enjoy training here to the sound of music. Okay. <laughs> Are you pooping? Uh, ah! uh, oh no! has got death! Paimon can't do anything! <laughs> Me too! The faint sound of birdsong. The quiet murmur Aww. of the streams. <sighs> These are relaxing sounds. <sighs> are they not the music of which you speak? Well, birdsong oh. kind of is. Uh, kind of. Paimon wasn't quite done with the description. <laughs> Oh, yeah? Okay, fine. It's all Paimon's fault. What we're looking for are not the sounds of nature, but melodies played on special instruments. Oh. And a melody is? Uh, go on, Paimon. Sing as a nursery rhyme. Or Ganyu, why don't you sing? <gasps> sing the folk song you sing to the glaze lilies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, huh? Yeah, yeah, do it. Hey, why don't you just sing that one melody Shen has heard? Before. It'll probably help her to understand what we're talking about. Am I stupid for not remembering this? Fingers crossed this water track, Teddy. Oh, the one that, that Ganyu's heard. I assume. <laughs> Are you actually going to speak? <laughs> oh, was that? From the opera that Yunjin sang? Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. That was a melody, and melodies can be called music. It felt like I was transported back to the past. In my mind's eye, I could see the Zhao lanterns lighting up the night sky again. Aww. We're all there, raising our glasses and drinking to our heart's content on the Jade Chamber. As I watched Yunjin's performance, I felt a warm sensation in my heart. And as the drink reached my stomach, it went from warm to hot. She peed and herself. When you that melody just now, feelings from a whole year ago came right back to me, as strong as they were on that day. Oh, that's cute. So that's the power of music. Yeah. Wow, Shen, huh? That was so deep! Yeah. Music definitely has the power to bring up memories. It's like a time capsule with all the special moments from our life squished inside. What about you, Ganyu? Are there any melodies that have left a deep impression on you? Um, I don't remember if my parents ever sang any lullabies to me. I know some local folk songs. And a few other things come to mind, too. 
the songs of the sailors down at the docks. The little ditties that the vendors call out in front of their beloved shops. The tunes of folk artists performing on the streets. All the sounds of Liyue Harbor. Yes, that's right. Aww. In the past, whenever I heard the sound of those tunes, I always felt that they were worlds apart from me. Nenny and Liyue probably view me as a non-human. And they are right, in the sense that I never could connect with humans' artistic expression and their sentiments. So I haven't been able to integrate into their community and be a part of their lives. At least, that's the view I held in the past. Only more recently did I start to realize that... The only barriers are ones that I have erected with my imagination. The way those melodies make me feel... Isn't all that different from other people after all. They're about mundane details of everyday existence. Aww. Life's ups and downs, joys and sorrows. Cute, Even dude. Even though we come from different backgrounds and have different stories to tell, when it comes down to the most common things that we see and experience around us each day in the city, in that sense, we're all the same. Yeah. You go, Ganyu! You're really making progress. You have loads of friends in Liyue Harbor when you think about it. Like... Um... Okay, maybe some are more like co-workers and bosses. But, at the very <coughs> least, Kuching and Chenna are your friends now, right? Paimon, you are yes, fucking annoying I sometimes. <laughs> Technically speaking, we should refer to each other by the conventional forms of address used among fellow disciples. <sighs> But now that I know what constitutes a friendship, I do believe we are more friends than co-disciples. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Once the days are warmer, I would like to host you at my home in the city. Please invite Kuching as well. Hell I've yeah. I've planted many types of flowers. I'm sure some of them will be to your taste. Ah, uh, you are too kind. <laughs> I couldn't possibly. Oh, no, no, no. Nonsense. You are my friend. I have cultivated and cared for the flowers just as you taught me. Once you've seen them for yourself, I am sure you can advise me how to do an even better job next time. I will save some for decoration. We can feast on the rest. Cute. Then, thank you in advance. Wait, what is that saying again? If you insist? If you insist. Yes. Do people say that? <sighs> I'm not completely sure either. They do. It doesn't matter, okay? You got the point across. No need to split hairs. Um, Paimon's more concerned about your idea of a girl's night out. <laughs> Eating flowers? Really? Does this have anything to do with you both being the disciples of that illuminated bird? I doubt Kaching will be munching on any flowers. I don't know, dude. I mean, if if I was, you know, invited to Ganyu and Shenha's place for a night of luxurious flower eating, I'd probably try a petal or two, I'm just saying. Hm. Who dares refer to one not by one's adeptus title, but merely as that illuminated bird? Who else but Paimon? Master. <laughs> Our greetings, Cloud Retainer. Oh god. Ah! There it is! The illuminated bird is landed! God damn it, Paimon! Double Respect! Hunt. Now she has the gall to use it rather than she. Even oh, after being chastised once already? Huh. Oh, no. Barely a moment has passed since we last met, and Wrath. yet your impertinence has reached new heights. Very well. If you refuse to learn your lesson, one shall scold you no further. Just death? One has received your message from Ganyu. On the matter of the Adeptus you seek, one suspects to know their identity. Oh, does one? Well... Shall one lead the way? Yes, please, one. I still have to complete my training for today. So I will bid farewell to everyone here. No! Very well. <laughs> Await my arrival at one's abode later this night. On this special occasion, you should indulge yourself with some savory dishes. Bye, Shed, her happy lot of right. See you never, if you ever get a reword. If you want to release a Shao Lantern... Come and find us anytime. <gasps> yeah. Thank you. I everyone. want. I want some. I never Happy had them. Lantern right to you too. I never got to have Jalan. I forgot about that. That was in the live stream, dude. Cute, dude. Oh, 
she let the dude. Oh, that's so cute. I love it. Chat, I'm probably dumb here. Was this the area of the Zhao quest or no? Was that somewhere else? Or it might have been like there. I remember it being a beach where it killed a load of things. It's close somewhere else. Hmm, fair. I remember it looking like this. Close. Hmm. Is this Quaily Plains? Yes. Cloud Retainer, why did you bring us here? God Yu is of course familiar with the name Guizhong, but have you ever heard of her? Yes, I've definitely heard it somewhere. Guizhong is another name of Agentis, the god of dust. She was extroverted in nature and adored social gatherings and inventions alike. Okay. Long ago, this region was yet a prosperous assembly. Guizhong often invited her friends to visit her home. Is it actually going to be Guizhong? Reserving for us seats around the largest stone table. Go away, Norton. Jesus Christ. The gazer would always bring out his latest treasure and place it upon the table. Ah, oh, he could be quite the braggart. Though usually a mild-mannered fellow, when it came to those collectibles he was so fond of, he always loved to show them off. Huh. I don't remember that name. So that's what Seagazer was like. He was an old friend and a former rival. One has many memories of him. Once he had brought out the treasure, it would predictably become the center of attention. <laughs> Neither Guizhong nor one was content to let him just steal the spotlight. So we would then also present our proudest mechanical creations. As Adepti, we were each gifted in our own ways, and naturally proud of our accomplishments and our respective fields of expertise. As a result, one often quarreled with Seagazer. Mm. His treasures were not even of his own making. He just used his exploration skills to dig them out of the ground. How, pray tell, could he compare to me when every single one of one's accomplishments were crafted by one's own hand? Okay, I mean, no need to be toxic, you are though. Getting competitive again. Yeah, be nice. Friendly competition is always good. <laughs> one digresses. <laughs> Regardless, every time an argument occurred, Guizhong would come over to watch us during our mutual lambastics. On some occasions, she would join in, and on others, she'd take one of us by the limb and start uttering the most ridiculous nonsense. What? What kind of nonsense? Yeah, like a different language or random no words? No kind of nonsense were we spared. Sometimes she would brazenly opine, Ah, why argue between yourselves when neither of you could ever hope to beat me? Other times, <laughs> she would make unsolicited <laughs> suggestions, such as, Once you two are done arguing, let's go to the foot of the mountain and grill some meat. It's not nonsense. She always sought to make everyone happy. Aww. And one must say, she had quite the gift for it. No matter what nonsense she said, one never felt bothered or offended. Poor Guizhong, dude. It also helped that she never referred to one as that illuminated bird <laughs> or ladybird. Ladybird! <laughs> yeah, come on, get over yourself! Bye bye! I swear, every <laughs> lantern right you anyway, turn nasty. Just as our impassioned arguments would reach the apex of acrimony, Marchosius would bring his delectable dishes to the table. Who would dare snub the stove god and his wondrous creations? At the sight of him, we would all immediately drop the argument and prepare the table for a night of feasting and drinking. Holy law, dude. <laughs> Back then, one was always bothered by how the cups Rex Lapis brought were always too square for one's taste. Can you see yourselves ever enjoying a drink from a square cup? Yes. No? Why? What? Why? Square cups would arguably be better than a round cup. Because for a round cup, you're placing your lips over it and there's the chance of it spilling out to the side. With a square cup, it's got corners so you can just drink out of the corner. It's not weird at all. Y'all are weird. <laughs>
Chat, you're telling me if Zhong Li came up to you and offered you a drink of Osmentha's wine in a square cup, you'd turn the motherfucker down? Because I disagree. Uh, I don't think I'd really mind. Then you are most tolerant. But that is its own virtue. <laughs> yes, Even it do be. Even one could never find fault with Marchosius's cooking. As we ate, Gui Zhang would continue to find topics for conversation, filling the table with humor and laughter. Cute. Each of those old fossils had their character flaws and points of obstinacy. So why was it that whenever we dined together, we always had a marvelous time? We would drink together from a spot high in the mountains, until the moon set and the sun rose, and only then would the banquet finally come to an end. I have a question here. And this might be an out of left field question, but it's based on what was just said because it made me think. So the way that the three moons worked was that there were three moons in the sky and they each took turns in being the present moon in the sky, right? With the way that works, wouldn't that mean there would technically have to be three suns as well? Assuming that obviously there's no gravitational pull to stuff and the, and the sky is fake and that there's three moons up there, I assume there would be three suns as well. But then again, it's a lot of assumptions. I don't think there is like a yes or no, I guess, because... We don't know what the fake sky actually means. And like the three moons, are the, are the three always in the sky? Just one is always seen or are two of them hidden and they just get boop, boop, quick swapped out? I don't know. Weird, dude. Weird. Streetwood Rambler would often remain to admire the <gasps> flowers with Guizhong. Streetwood Rambler. Returning to her own abode. The glaze lilies were far more abundant back then. Entire fields of them would appear to the eye as a veritable sea of flowers. Streetwood Rambler. Who is the Streetwood Rambler? We know because it's uh, Yao Yao's constant. Oh, Ping. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, because I, I think it's Yao Yao's uh, affinity or constellation name or something. Streetwood Rambler? Yeah. That would be Ping. Yeah. You probably know her as Madam Ping. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wait, this is a lovely story and everything, but didn't we come here to find that Adeptus from Mr. Dvorak's story? Or are you saying that it was Guizhong? Didn't she, um, already, um... Alas, long has one avoided this place for precisely that reason. The sights here are a reminder of a time long gone. Mm. And evoke much sorrow. One should have guessed that you would disrupt one's poignant moment of mourning with your incessant questioning. Yeah. No matter. One will share the whole story with you now. Oh, now I feel really bad. You don't have to share. In times gone by, oh, one pulled oft with Gui Zhang concerning mechanical principles. We each had our ideals, and neither would yield. Under the pretext of a social gathering, one invited the impartial Rex Lapis to judge the quality of our creations. You're the armor pauldron. Rex Lapis declared that Gui Zhang's obscuro vulpus mechanism was superior. <laughs> Though one was too proud to acknowledge it, in one's heart, one knew that Gui Zhang was indeed the superior talent in the mechanical arts. As for the story between Gui Zhang and Streetward Rambler, that begins with a certain bell. In Gui Zhang's opinion, oh. all mechanisms were no substitute for human composers. They were yet capable of producing simple but fine melodies. But Streetward Rambler believed music to be an expression of the soul. An emotional enterprise that could never hope pain. to be replicated by machinery. They argued endlessly, until one asked Rex Lapis to intercede. He confiscated the bell and designated it for ceremonial use. Bro, look at Zhong Li, dude. One would often find them convening in the mountains, discussing music, mechanics, and all the affairs of the mortal world. Wait, why is her cape doing that? It was... But these good times were not to last. War broke out between the gods and soon engulfed the Guili Plains. Gui Zhang was overpowered by the enemy and fell in battle. When oh. Streetwood Rambler and I arrived at the scene at long last, all that remained among the ruins was her lifeless body. Jesus. After this, 
At Straightward Rambler's request, Rex Lapis granted her the cleansing bell for safekeeping. To honor our friend's memory, one made a few finishing touches to her ballistic device. Many lantern rites have passed since then. Many greetings and goodbyes. Oh, man. Upon what do you gaze? The Gwaili Plains? No. It's... everything. We think of human life as like a lantern that's... lit one minute and extinguished the next. Dude, the VA but too. Our adept eyes are different. Good Perhaps voice. Perhaps dust settles after a storm. We too must one day return to the world below. The world below and the dust. The memory of dust. Mm. One has always been austere and private by nature, and has never uh. relished socialism. One's dealings with Guizhong were born out of discussions on the discipline of mechanics. Dude, Zhongli's armor pauldrons looked sick. And then Young Ping and Guizhong, dude, they looked stellar. They looked so good. Oh my god. What? You have loads of friends. <sighs> and you seem pretty chatty. Just because Jesus. one is not ignorant of social graces does not mean one is fond of them. One is perfectly capable of partaking in conversation despite being introverted. Now that you've said it, yeah, Cloud Retainer did kind of look like a uh, Fuhua. I was thinking more Bayonetta. She looks very Bayonetta esque but in the end, with the design. One is nothing a Fuhua like too, kind of. She is dauntless but thoughtful, not to mention eloquent and wise. Moreover, her friendship with Guizhong was far greater than one's own. Hmm. Back when they were rivals, they would often compete against one another in the realm of musical composition. That cleansing bell was one of Gui Zhang's proudest works, having the ability to both compose and perform. Uh. Wait, that's weird. Didn't Madame Ping say she pestered an old friend for that bell? Yeah. And she also said something about being a vain beauty when she was young or something. Streetward Rambler, a vain beauty. <laughs> My foot. <laughs> That bell has a sad history. Clearly, she refrained from sharing with you the truth of its origins, since the right time had not yet come. As for her old friend, who else could it be? As soon as Streetward Rambler heard that a certain Zhang Li wished to borrow the bell, she was smart. She realized that the man was none other than Rex Lapis, and that he had made an enormous decision. Yeah. After all, we all have known each other for several millennia. Some things between us are implicitly understood. Whoa! So they were talking in secret code? The music. Oh, Paimon did not see that one coming. Hm. Enough of your intrusions. Where was one up to? Ah, yes. One remembers now. The cleansing bell is powered by a mechanical art and can be used to great effect as an accompanying instrument. After the passing of its creator, it was used on numerous occasions during rites of parting. But Streetward Rambler did not acquire it from Rex Lapis for the purpose of producing further funerary tunes. No, each time she rang it, it was to play the tune that Guizhong composed on it. The two once clashed over their beliefs about the meaning of music. Who would have thought that with Guizhong's passing and Streetward Rambler's mourning, two tunes composed in discord would eventually become Damn. one harmonious composition? Oh, holy shit, dude. <sighs> God damn. Once upon a time, Streetward Rambler also loved gatherings, liquor, and music. But after Guizhong passed, she preferred her own company. She could often be found sitting alone at a mountain summit, contemplating and reminiscing with her zither. The music would go from mournful to soothing to impassioned. 
Many years passed before she finally composed a melody to our satisfaction. In celebration, she played the tune to the clouds. Regrettably, one has only ever heard her play that tune once. Which brings one back to the matter you've been investigating. Perhaps it was during that performance that the ancestor of your Fontaine friend fell into the water and was saved by Streetwood Rambler. But if she was so happy with the melody, why would she only play it once? True. One was also greatly perplexed by this. After suppressing one's curiosity for a long while, one finally approached her and asked why she would retire the tune after having spent so long on it. In response, she said, Though the strings that played that melody survive, the one who inspired it is gone. Tell me, Cloud Retainer, when the one attuned to my soul is no longer here, who else could hope to understand this tune? Jesus. Deep. Aww. Poor Madam King. I just remember being taken care of by you when I was young. Once the Archon War came to an end, I stayed behind in Liyue Harbor to honor my contract. Although I met Guizhong a few times, I never knew anything of this particular story. Guizhong was quite the visionary. But tragically passed before her time. Mm. Her manuscripts still lie unfinished in the realm of clouds. The blank pages give one cause for contemplation on what might have been. Had you not decided to search for that mystery Adeptus, perhaps these stories too would have been lost to the sands of time. That's true. As of now, you know the truth. That the Adeptus who rescued the drowning man was none other than Streetwood Rambler. Aww. Do you intend to discuss this with her? Um. Do you mean Ping might find the topic too distressing? Yeah, probably. Precisely. The passing of our old friend is a heavy topic that both of us are usually careful to avoid. If I may be so bold, Cloud Retainer, could it be that this is just your own personal opinion? Maybe. Oh. How so? I've been in Leo Harbor for quite a long time now, and I've witnessed many farewells along the way. So I, too, am well acquainted with the pain of the passing of a loved one. But this doesn't bring the city or its people to a standstill. They have to keep moving forward. Someone as perceptive and wise as Ping will surely have come to understand and embrace this. Though these immortal mountains have lost an Adeptus, the harbor of mortals has gained a wise elder. No loss can ever be undone, but there is always much that can still be gained. Ping has helped countless people and will guide many others in the years to come. And all to whom she extends a helping hand become her friends. People she can admire flowers and discuss music with. Though it is heartbreaking to lose a kindred spirit, life goes on. True. Because there are new friends waiting for you further down the road. Oh, goddamn, dude. She, uh, she spot that from the heart. Can you do be correct? We even asked Madame Ping what she thought about adding a music festival to this year's Lantern Rite. Mm-hmm. Oh, when we get back, why don't we just ask her if she'd mm. like to perform? Maybe we can even get her up on stage. Oh man, if they play the song though, that's gonna be so sad. You youngsters and your imaginations. Oh god. Why don't you come with us? It's been a long time since you last spoke with Ping, and Leo Harbor is always decorated so beautifully during the festival period. Is not every lantern right the same in this regard? Were there ever anything new to discuss? One in Ping could meet any day of the year. I disagree. Each new day and each new year is different from those that have come before. Agreed. How long will you simply let them pass you by? If nothing else, do it for Ganyu. Hmm. The edibles she brought this time were indeed quite delectable. Huh? Very well. Then one will be off. 
If the other old fossils have sneaked away into the city to amuse themselves, one shall soon find out. Catch us next time on episode three, High with Ping. <laughs> All right. We should be getting back to the harbor as well. We don't want to keep her waiting. Okay. <sighs> Once the Gwaley Assembly, now the Gwaley Plains. Say, if we planted flowers there and cared for them carefully enough, do you think that one day we'd be able to recreate the Sea of Glaze Lilies? Allow one to oh, take Jesus. back one's praise from a moment prior. You are still far too given to flights of fancy, child. Shut up. What? <laughs> Cloud Retainer? You were still listening? <laughs> one observed that you were making no effort to leave and return to chasten and hasten you. This time, one is departing in earnest. Yeah, you just can't wait to get high. Jeez, I, I thought the only time I'd ever see high ping in Genshin is when I play on NA, dude. I didn't think ping would actually get high. I can get a clickbait YouTube video. How to get illuminated foul in Genshin Impact. I missed. It's fine. It's fine. Whoa, Madam Ping and Cloud Retainer? Hell yeah. It appears you made haste after all. One arrived but moments before you. Okay. Oh, bless my soul. To what do I owe the honor? How nice of you all to come and visit me. This makes me very curious as well when it comes to adepti and ages and how they age and how quickly they age in terms of looks or choose to... Uh, I, I, so many questions this now. This illuminated bird, haven't you said anything yet? <laughs> said what precisely? And why should one be tasked with saying it? Cause you're the one who's known Madame Ping the longest. True. Uh, yeah. Street word. <clears throat> or rather, presumably, you would prefer to be addressed as Ping? Oh, Cloud Retainer, you are uncommonly polite today. <laughs> one, uh... uh hmm. <laughs> Given that Lantern Rite is almost upon us, the weather in the city is most pleasant, and a sweet floral fragrance lingers in the air. Ahem. Ganyu, please continue from here. Huh? Oh god, not like this. Uh, alright. So, this all started because we were trying to help Mr. Dvorak find the Adeptus who saved his ancestor's life. Mm-hmm. Can you recount the story to Madame Ping? I want to hear it again with the cutscene, please. Cloud Retainer informed us that the one who played that melody and rescued the drowning man was none other than yourself. Yeah. Ah, let me think. Yes, I do believe I recall that encounter. <laughs> but a long time ago. Cloud Retainer was. noises. I'm surprised that you still remember it. The edibles are kicking in. Even more astonishing, perhaps, is the fact that this story has survived this long at all, when mortal lives are so very brief. Mm. <laughs> it appears that she has proven herself right once again. Aww. Who's she? I assume Guizhong. We like to call her Guizhong. From the look in Cloud Retainer's eyes, I Aww. sense that she has already told you all about her. Yeah. <sighs> Albeit reluctantly, one might add. Oh, there is no harm done. After all, Lantern Rite's very purpose is to commemorate the heroes who gave their lives for Liyue. -e. Although Gui Zhong did not live to see the splendid sights of today, she was as much a hero as any other. Uh, so how has she proven herself right again exactly? Once upon a time, oh, she said to me that humans were a weak form of life that she wished to protect with her wisdom. But as she interacted more and more with them, her opinions on them began to change. She marveled at the beautiful complexity of their spirits, the sheer splendor of all they could accomplish through their hard work and intelligence. She told us that to underestimate human potential would be to make a grave mistake. 
Damn. With the smallest amount of guidance, enormous power can be unleashed in them. That's very interesting. Because that could mean figuratively, it could mean like emotionally, or it could quite literally mean with a bit of guidance, enormous power can be unleashed. And it was said in the game that Adepti granted visions at some point, or that there was a belief that Adepti granted visions. So... And a human who has reached their full potential may well be her equal. Mm. Someone who could have as much to teach an Adeptus as to learn from them. Damn. Hm. She always had a way with words. That her mechanical accomplishments were judged superior to one's own was, one suspects, in large part due to her sheer eloquence. What if Guizhong was the person who created the visions? And that was her mechanical accomplishments? Speaking of mechanics, Cloud Retainer, <laughs> do you still remember that potted plant mechanism? The one that the two of you gave me as a gift? Oh. Of course. Guizhong and one both put an immense amount of effort into that gift. It would be no overstatement to call it a testament to each of our individual technical genius. As Gui Zhang once said, it takes every blade of grass and every flower to make a homeland. Cute. When I see the sight of Liyue Harbor before us today, I am reminded of this. Madam Ping looks very emotional right now. Well, she's been through a lot in her time. And Paimon, please don't ruin this emotional moment like you did in the Shenhe quest as well, where you're like, Can we get a move on? Just let it pan out. Let it pan out. <sighs> of all of us, it was Gui Zhong who was the fondest of these grand and exciting occasions. <laughs> if she were still with us, I'm quite sure she would still be trying to best Cloud Retainer's finest works at every opportunity. Mm. Liyue Harbor is always filled with the sound of music at this time of the year. If she were here, one is certain that she would seek you out to discuss and debate the virtues of various melodies. Oh yeah, music! We've been dying to ask, what was the melody that you played back then? Oh, also, with you being such a music expert and all, why don't you join the concert as a performer? Yeah, do it. I can make arrangements right away. Oh. As much as I don't wish to dampen your enthusiasm, it's been a long time since I played this zither. My fingers don't have the dexterity they once did. Oh. And whenever I play that tune, it always reminds me of her. I start wondering what she would think of the changes I have made to her melody. There was a period of time whenever I started strumming, it almost felt like she was back again. Oh. Sitting right there on the stone stool next to me, chatting away. Skybracer and Seagazer too, looking just like they did in the old days. No matter how much time goes by, the moment that melody starts playing, it transports me right back to that time in my memory. So the past still weighs heavily on your heart? Well, I would be lying to myself if I claimed to have completely moved on. But that is not to say that grief doesn't get easier with time. Mm. Despite the sadness, I have found many things that bring me joy in life. It is simply the nature of the world in which we live that, even if one wished to mourn for an eternity, it would be a nigh-impossible feat. Just look at this potted plant. Isn't it stunning? It takes an honest and open mind to confront and conquer grief. You have indeed made progress. Damn, this Latinum right here in deep, dude. <laughs> God. Be that as it may, I shall leave the lantern right stage to the youth of today. Well, if you're sure. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Let's oh, I see a fairy. Let's go. Did something bad happen? What if that was uh, oh. Zinyang? And now we've spooked Yanfei. <laughs> you don't know. Everyone's just here to give me their regards for the holiday. Hell yeah. Oh, 
That's wonderful, I'm glad. Well, in that case, happy lantern ride, everyone. Happy lantern ride. Happy lantern ride. Oh, I... I just remembered that I have some... Uh, work to do at your high pavilion that I need to discuss with Yenfei. I haven't been able to find a chance until now. I will leave Mr. Dvorak in your capable hands. Cloud Retainer, Ping, we will be off for now. Hmm. Uh huh? Does it have to be right now? Which case is this again? Hey, Ganyu! <laughs> that was very Since rushed Ganyu off. still has much to learn when it comes to the art of deception. <laughs> a little bit. What a pity. She has learned nothing of one's <laughs> ability to carry a conversation. Nope. Since it's been so long, Cloud Retainer, why don't you stay? I'll make a cup of tea and we can chat a while. Gladly. This was one's intention as well. Nice. Oh. When you see the Fontaine musician, please give him my regards. I'd like to wish him the very best with the concert. Do you think Cloud Rotator drinks tea like a normal duck tries to drink water where it gets its beak and it's like... <clears throat> and it just gets it everywhere, dude? Oh my god. You got it, Madam Ping. Thank you all. I think you've listened to enough of my nattering for one day. True. As for but that it's melody, very cute, though. I will play it for you all another time. <gasps> Goodness knows I need to practice it first. Yeah. Wow, that'd be great. We'll look forward to it. <laughs> when that time comes, wherever her spirit may be among the countless grains of sand and specks of dust between the harbor and the mountains, perhaps she will look at the Leoa of today and steal a smile when she sees the prosperous land that it has become. Oh. All right, let's go tell Mr. Dvorak the news. Ah, it's too cute, dude. Ping, what say you to convening more often in the future? Oh? That would be quite wonderful. But I must say, after all this time, I've grown quite accustomed to the harbor. When we are to meet, I shall have to trouble you to make the journey to the city. You sound just like Shen <laughs> The child is constantly telling one all sorts of stories from the city, as if one was partial to them. Probably is. Have you ever considered moving to the city, Cloud Retainer? There are plenty of people here to talk to. I don't think she would. I think you would find it quite the antidote to the monotony of solitude. I don't think she would. And if you looked around... I suspect you would find some young minds with an interest in the mechanical arts. Some of them even worth training. <laughs> we shall see. I mean, that, that wasn't a no. Yo, they bring her playable format. I, I will be very happy. Very, very happy. ka -ching! It's ka -ching. Mr. Well, hello there. set all of this up welcome back did everything go well yeah really really well super we well found the person mr dvorak was looking for should we have said well i guess you know what it doesn't matter yeah uh, are, are you serious yeah we found him you recount the true story of the fair fairy lady to kaching and dvorak uh, i see so the melody my ancestor heard was an adeptus remembering her late friend that certainly explains why it was such a powerful and poignant tune. Hey, that's why she's gonna be audible. <laughs> huh. That's a really interesting first reaction. Big audible. Guess that comes with having a musical mind. <laughs> uh, I have to say, though, it, it's hard to believe that the fairy from the tale is now an elderly granny. Yeah. Oh, Paimon knows exactly what you mean. Normally, Adepti don't age at all. But Stray Word Rambler, or Madam Ping as we know her, Probably only became old because it's what she wanted for herself. She just gets to choose. Madam Ping possesses vast knowledge and great wisdom. Whatever physical form she may decide to take, her mind and wits are as sharp as they come. So. Yep. Kuching summed it up perfectly. That's exactly what Paimon was trying to say. So they don't age unless they want to. 
unless they consciously make that decision to age. But I'm curious, because she just said whatever mind, whatever body they take, their wits are super strong and stuff. I'm curious if, even if she chose to look younger, she would still have aged, because they're not immortal. Like, it, it, once they've chose to age, can they then choose to unage? Like, I don't know, that's weird. I think... Maybe, yes. I don't know. I must thank her in person. That mm. can wait until after the concert, though. For now, I need to devote all my emotional energy to the performance. That's also what I was going to say. If age wasn't a problem, why would her fingers be losing dexterity to be able to play the zither? I don't, like, I... I don't know. Ah, speaking of, Madam Ping wishes you all the best at the music festival. Paimon has a sneaking suspicion that she'll stay in her usual spot, but listen to the performances from afar. Wait, are you serious? Huh. Mm. Oh no, now I'm starting to get nervous. But last, just treat it like any other performance. Okay, all right. <laughs> nope, another rehearsal is in order. <laughs> Please excuse me, everyone. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> Planning an <laughs> instrument. <laughs> Chat, I, I'm completely understanding. I play instruments. I know playing an instrument still takes practice. I understand. I'm not stupid. I understand that. But her saying, my fingers are lacking the dexterity they once had. That doesn't sound like she hasn't fucking practiced in a while. That makes it sound like my hands are fucking old. It could just be an excuse, but it does make it sound like that. And if everyone in the room currently knows that they don't age, then it's a pretty bad excuse. <laughs> Before we set off on our circuit on you, he asked us about what music means to people. After our recent adventure, Paimon thinks we have a lot more to say about that now. Mm. Please, share your insights with me. Oh god. Uh, well, we found out that music can be used for good, but also for bad. Mm-hmm. Um, it can make people happy and moved, but it can also be sad and bittersweet. And music is, like... A kind of memory written in people's hearts. It can put you in touch with feelings from a totally different time and place. Yeah. Hell yeah. Pretty much, uh, though there was more to it than that. <laughs> it sounds like you had an eventful trip. Don't worry. I'm sure Ganyu will fill me in on all the details shortly. Wait, does that mean you're going to carry on working? Mm-hmm. Just a few things to wrap up. All the groundwork is done. As long as everyone enjoys the festival activities, all our efforts are worthwhile. Happy Lantern Rite, Kekwing. Happy Lantern Rite to you as well. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> that should be everything taken care of, right? Oh, no, wait. Huh? My mom feels like she's forgetting something. Ugh. What was it? Oh, it feels like it was a while ago. Zhongli, <laughs> who ta- Shoot! Latent... Wait, no. Oh, anyway, shoot. Uh, the soup. The yeah, for the... for the Made from nascent bamboo shoots. Bamboozle soup. Zhang Li said he wasn't in a hurry, so if we went now, there's probably still time, right? It's been three days. Anyway, even if we don't make it, it's not our fault. He could have <laughs> totally picked him by himself. True. <laughs> anyway, let's go check with him at Wang Chung Funeral Parlor. <laughs> It's been days, dude. Like actual days. Uh, okay. Who down? Let's go. And Eugene. We've already seen Zidane, so let's go. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. What is this, like, ominous? You've been pranked. Oh. Oh. All right. Let's take a break here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh wow, look who it is. Are you here to hang out with everyone's favorite funeral director? Oh, hell yeah. So you're just casually practicing your rapping skills at the entrance to your funeral parlor? In broad daylight? <laughs> uh, okay. You're uh, freaking me out a little. <laughs> After everything we've been through, you don't see me for a hot minute, and you're back to being scared of your own shadow. You're not my shadow, you're Hu Tao. open space, a clear view of the mountains behind and the sea in front. 
Not to mention we have several invisible audience members enthusiastically cheering us on. Oh god. It's the perfect spot to rehearse. That's so creepy. Invisible audience members? <sighs> Gotta say, it took me a few days to get used to Director Who's way of talking. That's not a way of talking. Uh, uh, Big G's gonna be in the crowd and clapping along, dude, I'm telling you. <laughs> Shin Yan was pretty spooked too when she first got here. Just like when she sees a frog, but a giant frog with sharp teeth. <laughs> Come on, knock it off. What? <laughs> oh, God. What's wrong? I've never seen someone look so confused before. Well, don't worry, because Director Who's here to explain it all. Okay. <clears throat> there once was a Fontaine musician who went around town on a mission. He came door to door for his iridescence tour, looking for acts to audition. With my words, Shin Yan's chorus and Yoon Jin as our mentor. Yeah. We'll take the stage by storm with flames roaring and the whole audience calling for more. Okay, heck yeah. For sure. The whole dance floor will be yelling encore, encore. Oh, now Paimon's rhyming along. Um, but when you say flames roaring, are you sure this will be safe? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, don't you worry about that. I'm pretty experienced on the stage, and I've already informed the Yuhong of all the pyrotechnics we're planning on using. Okay. Oh, I mean, that seems guess fine. We'll just have to trust Chin Yan on this one. Have you seen Zhongli at Director Who? Oh, Zhongli? He took one of those fancy meal boxes and set off for the mountains. Said he wanted to pay a visit to some old friends. It's a real pity that he couldn't be around for this. As well as being a true connoisseur oh. of traditional art forms, he's able to appreciate Shin Yan's performances too. Yeah, that's right. Matter of fact, he was the one who first invited me to perform here. To tell the truth though, I never thought I'd really find myself rehearsing here one day. <laughs> well, now you know. The Wangsheng Funeral Parlor is a great location. All of you are always welcome to come and hang out here. Especially if you're in the mood to try something new. I can speak to that. Hu Tao is always full of fun surprises. And jump scares. True. Actually, Xinyan, I have some lyric ideas for your part. Do you want to go through them together? Oh, sure thing. I'm all ears. Oh, Traveler and Paimon, I believe Zhang Li was heading to Mount Hulao, so make sure you're hiking up the right hill. Oh, when you see Zhang Li, please pass on this message to him. It's up to him whether he wants to support us at the performance tonight. But I expect him to make time for the upcoming banquet we're planning. No excuses. <laughs> you should join us too. It'll be a riot. Oh, God. If there's one thing I've learned from being a funeral director, it's how to throw a party. Okay. I might have taken that differently than you guys. I don't know, because everyone was being happy about that. But isn't Zhongli going up to share dinner with old friends? Him sitting on the table with the Osmentus wine. Where are those who share the memories? Not us. <laughs> I don't think it's for us with the soup. I think it's with them guys, no? Okay, everyone. I think that's a long enough break. Let's take it from the top, shall we? Ugh, Miss Yoon is such a strict mentor. These breaks aren't even long enough to have a sip of tea. <laughs> well, you were desperate to get involved, and this is what it takes. If I gave you half the chance, you'd be sipping tea till nightfall. Hey, how about I treat us all to some late-night snacks once we're done? Hotel, what you craving? Hmm, how about some stir-fried filet with a side of crab roe tofu? That doesn't sound bad. <laughs> Where are we going to find crab roe tofu so late at night? Zhang Ling! We could always just go pester masterful chef Zhang Ling. Mm, now I'm hungry. Hell yeah. All right, let's knock this out and then go oh. grab some food. Dude, now I'm hungry. God fucking damn it. Oh, with a boiler. This is the boiler. <laughs> Okay. Paimon sees them. It's illuminated deer <laughs> and illuminated bird number two. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. Long time no see. Hmm, a familiar face. Have you come from the Yue Harbor? How is the city nowadays? God, I miss that voice. Everything's great. But you know, if you're so curious, you can always go and check it out for yourself. In fact, Moon Carver has been taking many walks on Mount Tianhang in recent times. I believe the sights of the city are quite familiar to him. 
Zhongli, oh. here you are. We've brought the bamboo shoots you wanted. Hell yeah. Impeccable timing. Jean Lee puts the decent bamboo shoots of the cooking mechanism next to him who cover him out of shape of power it using their feet. Well, I couldn't finish the rest of it. to be slow cooked for many hours on low heat. Using Adeptus Arts to hasten the process is something of a shortcut. I couldn't read the rest. Wait, I couldn't finish it. It was too quick. That mechanism. Is that? Indeed. Cloud Retainer kindly lent me her supreme cuisine machine. <laughs> Can we not just call it a cooking machine? Nah, Supreme yeah, Cuisine really Machine's mind. way better, dude. She seems to take a lot of pride in her mechanical gizmos, so it's probably best if Paimon doesn't go changing the name willy-nilly. Yeah. I trust that you found the answers you were seeking during your recent journey? <sighs> yes. But when are you going to get your fucking pauldrons back? Because they look sick. Excellent. The past should be remembered, but not overly dwelt upon. Mm. Our journey should be seen as a means to take on more from the world around us. Yeah. When the bamboo shoot soup is ready, I must insist that you try some for yourself. Oh, you don't have to ask me twice. Oh, Zhang Li, who taught all this to tell you something. She said it's up to him whether he wants to support us at the performance tonight, but I expect him to make time for the upcoming banquet we're planning. No excuses. No excuses. It's performance. She must be in the Lantern Rite Music Festival. Mm -hmm. As for the banquet, uh, she didn't tell us anything more about that, but she invited us to come as well. As you can see, I have a prior engagement with two Adepti friends of mine tonight. Please, give Director Who my best wishes for the performance. Aww. As for the banquet, hmm, since the Director insists, far be it from a mere consultant like myself to refuse. <laughs> Absolutely. Nice. Oh Rex man. Lapis, oh. The bamboo shoot soup is ready. Thank you. I will examine it right away. Hmm. The appearance is exquisite. And the aroma rich and intense. The craftsmanship of this machine is commendable indeed. I'm hungry. And since you came all this way, you should not leave empty handed. Please, take some soup. It tastes most exquisite while still warm. Damn, okay. I'll take some. Oh, they just gave it me. Pog. Okay, I want to speak to them, though. Had one known that Cloud Retainer was in possession of such eminently useful devices, one would have sought to borrow one from her long ago. And yet, since you share my lack of enthusiasm for mechanisms and fine dining, it would have become a mere decorative ornament in your abode. <laughs> Not so. Had one had such a device to make up for one's lack of culinary prowess, Chenha would not have had to rely on flowers and herbs alone for sustenance while under one's care. Hmm. <laughs> in that case, shall we rendezvous with Cloud Retainer one day soon and request to borrow one more Supreme Cuisine machine? A fine idea. A fine idea indeed. Cute dude! Aw, can I ride him? <laughs> you know, I do think if Genshin ever added mounts, this should be the first five star mount. What about Zhongli? I intend to reminisce with my old friends for a while longer. You ought to get back to Liu Harbor. There is a performance you do not want to miss. True. What? I'm on the roof! Oh! Oh, we get another cutscene? I'm honored to be here on the Iridescence Tour stage. Hell yeah, All brother. Right, without further ado, I'm Shinyan. This is Hotel. And this is a little something called. <laughs> the Blaze Lilies! <laughs> the Blaze Lilies! Fader to do the, the rapping. 
Does right. anyone have any plans tomorrow? Oh? With another year behind us, I think we deserve a celebration of our own. Mm. My treat. Interested? The Tian Xuan footing the bill? I can't miss out on that. What was that she got given? What did you just get given? What was that? Oh. God damn, Zhao, you are cool. There's still another day, right? This feels like an end. I don't think this is an end, please. Maybe it is? Oh no. Oh, look at Gorva dancing. Yow, yow. Master, master, listen. <laughs> Cute. May the year ahead be a blessed one. I believe it shall be. Hmm. Master, the Shao Lanterns, I... Ha! Elementary! One shall fashion for you a Shao Lantern, the likes of which the world has never seen. God damn you it. must take it to Liu Wei Harbor to display its magnificence for all. <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. And there's still a whole one more day? Bro, what? <laughs> oh my god, part two complete. A single harmony for an irreplaceable soul. Ah, oh, Guizhong, Guizhong. Damn, dude. Xiao survived another lantern, right? Technically, I guess, yeah. I mean, we still have one more day. I, I thought that, dude, that felt like such an end. Day three. I am excited. Enter Shin, 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 is it Shinue Kiosk? I, I always pronounce it wrong, dude. I'm sorry. Okay, come on. Come on. Oh, so that's how it is. Oh, everyone's Thanks here. The suggestions, Mr. Zhongli. I have them all noted down. Hell yeah. I've long heard that your knowledge encompasses all things old and new, Mr. Zhongli. Mm -hmm. But I never knew that you were well versed in the art of cooking, too. It is truly an honor to make your acquaintance. Hell yeah. No need for formalities. I too feel humbled to be in the company of such talented young people. There are many things I could learn from you. Oh, you flatter us. <laughs> um, if it's possible, may I trouble you to provide a few words of guidance for my practices in exorcism? Ooh. Exorcism? I can't say I'm an expert in the field. But if you don't mind, we could start by discussing... Huh? Whoa, there's so many people here! Don't interrupt, I want to oh, hear about the exorcisms! I invited Zhang Li over. Paima never thought we'd be meeting so many old friends! <laughs> <laughs> Happy Lantern Rite, everyone! Happy Lantern Rite! Say it, chat. Happy Lantern Rite. Don't leave them hanging. Likewise. Please, take a seat. Thanks. I love seats. Right. Have a lot of bright. Having fun? Uh, I've become musically cultured. <laughs> Me too. I've seen Shinyan perform before, but this is the first time I've watched something like this. I heard that the audience loved it too, and she's been receiving quite a lot of performance invitations lately. 
She's more busy than ever, and Yoonjin's gonna help her. Yeah, the in-game audience absolutely loved it. The Twitter audience, bruh. Yep, and they asked us to pass on their season's greetings to everyone. They hope we'll have a wonderful gathering. The performance was spectacular indeed. However, it gave Shang Ling a huge burst of inspiration, which in turn gave us a bit of a headache. Mm. Us? Did Shang Ling ask you to try out her dishes too? <laughs> that, my friend, is beside the point. I thought you said bestie. Watching you eat was enough for me. <laughs> Come to think of it, I probably shouldn't have burdened Chong Yoon with eating my share too. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. Xiangling came up with a new recipe? <gasps> Let Paima try! Oh, God. See? Someone here knows how to encourage people. Thanks, Paimon. Oh, no. Oh, and I have to thank Mr. Zhongli, too. He gave me lots of useful pointers that really drove it home for me. Oh, so that's what you were talking about before we arrived. Yes. Since we'll be dining together, the topic of our conversation naturally revolved around cooking. Chong Ling's ideas are truly unconventional. Her choices in both ingredients <laughs> and spices are comparable to a melody dancing on the tongue. Yeah, they're interesting, My indeed. My were nothing more than the icing on the cake. Oh, the two of you always deliver. <laughs> now I'm getting embarrassed. <laughs> anyway, I'll get everyone to have a taste after I've adjusted the recipe based on Mr. Chong Li's advice. Okay. Hmm. That sounds like it might become a little safer to eat. How about I sample the dishes next time? Speaking of eating, Paima feels like we're missing someone. Oh, Ku Tao. Ku Tao was the one who invited us, but she's not here. She AWOL. And, uh, where's Guoba? Oh, uh, Guoba volunteered to help Dad at the restaurant. What? You know, lots of people come over to eat during Lantern Rite. Without Guoba helping out, I probably wouldn't have had the time to accept Hu Tao's invitation. As for Hu Tao... The director mm. went to collect a guest. She asked me to stay here and host you for the time being. Seems like it's almost time. Huh? Hu Tao went to fetch someone in person? Oh, that must mean they are super important. Could it be... Kuching? Ningguang? Or... <gasps> Captain Bino! All of them. She didn't clarify. And as her subordinate, I couldn't just pry into the details, could I? Fair. Oh, suddenly the door to the restaurant bursts open as if struck by a hurricane. We're here. Is it Bino? Did she kick it in? We're not late to the party, right? No. Right, good thing the conqueror of demons and I are hell? both as swift as the wind. Oh! And whoosh, we made it just in time. Wait, Xiao? Okay. I see. So the important guest is the conqueror of demons. I've been looking forward to meeting you. Ah, yes, the meeting. The director didn't mention anything when she invited us. What a pleasant surprise. Gathered here with us tonight are not only young and accomplished individuals, but also the protector of Leo's peace, Adeptus Alatus. Oh, to convene here with all of you is indeed a great honor. Uh... A few days ago, at Wang Xiu Inn. What? Oh, we time travel exists in Genshin! It's almost lantern right. Yet you took all the trouble coming here. Bro, I'm waiting for the day where it says, A few thousand years ago. Into that. And then it just pans to, like, Zhongli and the Archon skin at the Archon War. Oh, dude. It'll happen one day, right? Hopium. <sighs> The director has a way of making it difficult to decline. Rex Lapis, may I ask what troubles you? The director asked me to buy sesame oil in preparation for the celebrations. Huh. Hmm. Then why would you come all the way to Wangshu Inn? I had a pleasant chat with Chef Yen Chao and received some spices from him. And, see? Here's some Matsutake and a portion of ham. What about the sesame oil? Hmm. It's a shame. <laughs> I couldn't find the kind the director was looking for. The cat did. The cat! I'm sure you're exaggerating, Zhang. <clears throat> Sir. <laughs> uh, very 
goes again. Enough with the pleasantries. Go let our guests take a seat. Everyone here today is well known in their own field and has probably heard about one another to some Wait, extent. Wait, I'm confused now. Some of us are even old acquaintances, so there's no need to be this formal. I heard that the Conqueror of Demons and the Traveler are pretty close, no? We're all friends, kinda. Whenever I call his name, he will be there, just like the song. Great, you two sit together. Pog. It's you okay. should take a seat too, Director. Zhao, it's okay if your feet don't touch the floor. It's don't, don't. It's okay. Oh, finally remembered me. When we arrived just now, the host at Xinyue Kiosk told me our dishes are almost ready. Perfect timing. Let's not Ooh. wait any longer and ask them to bring up the food. <laughs> Tippy toes on the floor, dude. It's so cute. Zhao is so tall. <laughs> no, he's a short I king. I would have never guessed the person who Tao went to fetch was Xiao. No, me either, oh. honestly. That's also the first I've heard of the Traveler and Paimon being friends with the Conqueror of Demons. Mm. You know Xiao Chu? Well, I think if there's anybody that Chong Yun could get advice from about exercising evil spirits and stuff, surely Xiao would have some words of insight at the very least. Knowing is a bit of an overstatement. Yeah. <laughs> I've always looked up to him. You might not know this, Paimon, but we exorcists have worked in close collaboration with the Conqueror of Demons for many generations. Understandable. Spelling evil together, both in the open and from the shadows. Hard to imagine that thanks to Hu Tao, I've finally gotten the chance to meet him. Conqueror of Demons, I am honored to make your acquaintance. Likewise. Cute, dude. It is a great honor indeed to have a chance to meet the legendary Conqueror of Demons. Chang Yun has brought that name up quite a few times in the past. I remember you mentioning wanting him to understand the importance of exorcists. Uh-oh. Uh -huh. Don't embarrass him. <laughs> uh, we know each other too. Huh? He helped try my dishes during the Masterful Chef's cook-off. <laughs> I didn't think we'd have the chance to meet again. Happy Lantern right? Oh, hell yeah. No anecdote, however, compares to meeting you in person. I'm Singcho, Xiangling and Chang Yun's friend. The pleasure is all mine. Whoa, everyone's getting all formal and polite all of a sudden. Uh, Paimon doesn't know what she should say anymore. Fart fireworks. Oh, Adeptus Xiao, mighty conqueror of demons. Please accept Paimon's greetings too. Belated happy lantern right. Oh my god. You didn't do that event? I wasn't playing at that time, but I did watch it, so I know what she's talking about, at least. Uh, belated isn't the right word to use here. Paimon tried very hard to look for a fancy word, okay? Don't be too harsh on Paimon! Okay! There's no need to be so polite. You're right. This was meant to be a nice little get-together between friends, after all. Too much formality kills the atmosphere. True. I didn't plan this gathering only for everyone to walk on eggshells. Hiya. What's your true intention, then? Okay, Lucifer. A little get-together between friends, sipping the finest tea and watching lanterns float into the sky, bidding farewell to the past and embracing the present with joy. And that is something our consultant would say. I think it deserves a standing ovation. I don't want to stand. Did Indeed. Exceptional acting skills, Director. It really just clapped. As for me, I'm just here to have fun and treat everyone to something good. We all worked really hard this year. Whether traveling or guiding, cooking, helping with the family business, exercising evil spirits, or conquering demons. True. And of course, our consultant, who's been helping out at the parlor every now and then. <laughs> everyone has done some pretty amazing things. As the one who brought everyone together, it goes without saying that I'm the one most deserving of praise. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, please. A lower dosage of cringe, please. A lower dosage. Oh, no. Huh? Sounds kind of self-important, but... Paimon thinks it's pretty amazing that she managed to talk Xiao into coming. He rarely ever enters Liyue Harbor, after all. I'm curious about how she did it. It wasn't as complicated as you think. Not long ago at Wangshu Inn again. <laughs> okay, so this does pick up. I was very confused okay, at what... gotcha. Never mind. Thanks, boss lady. What was the point of the other flashback? It's not boss lady, just boss. <laughs> <sighs> and there she goes. Bye. girl. Conqueror of Demons, Adeptus Shao. 
guardian of Wangshu In, hero of Dihua Marsh. I know you're there. Oh my god. <laughs> Quiet. Do not disturb the peace. Sorry, but you wouldn't show up if I didn't yell your name, would you? True. I know you. You're the 77th director of Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. Is there something you need? <laughs> that does sound like one of Hu Tao's antics. Did the Conqueror of Demons agree to come so that Hu Tao would stop pestering him? Probably. <laughs> there might be other reasons. <laughs> Smart guess. Huh? There's more to it? Yes, tell us. It gets pretty boring from here on. I talked about the funeral parlor's past relationships with the Guardian Yakshas. You know, just to be sociable. In the time of the Archon War, disputes were frequent, and disaster overtook the land. Humans couldn't escape from the torment of the plague, nor could they escape death. The Adepti vanquished the demons, the Millilith fought valiantly, and Wang Shung Funeral Parlor was responsible for purifying the diseased and sending off the spirits of the dead. Damn, okay. That is how the border between life and death was maintained during the war. And it effectively prevented further incidents from happening. That's right. One point for the consultant. <laughs> but despite our deep-rooted connection, it still took me quite a while to actually convince him. Was he worried about his karma? I love how we're talking about him like he's not sat right there, clearly listening. You know him pretty well, huh? Yes! This matter is out of my control, so I need to be cautious. True, but I've kept that in mind too. That's why everyone here today is in one way or another acquainted with elemental power. True. Yeah, true. Besides, it'll only be for a short while as we dine together. There won't be any lasting consequences. But mm. I didn't expect there to be so many people. Socially no awkward. Worry, conqueror of demons. My short king. We're not feeling anything unusual so far. Our young exorcist over here is protected by his pure yang energy, so he's probably the most resilient. Mm. Th that's not the same. No? And did you just toss your carrots into my bowl? <laughs> hey, don't look away. Huh? <laughs> what? What? I'm siding with Chong Yun. I saw that too. Jesus. It's like it's like when you don't want to eat the food and so you feed it to the dog under the table, but Chong Yun's the dog. <laughs> You're lucky Guoba isn't here today. He hates seeing people being picky with their food. If he'd seen that, he'd definitely make you eat all your carrots. Ugh. Huh? Guoba would do that? Is he that uncompromising? Hmm. But now that I think of it, Shangling told me that Guoba used to be the stove god. Uh-huh. <laughs> it sounds like you've heard the rumors. Hmm. <laughs> Seem pretty quiet today. Is everything okay? I'm doing fine. Not long ago, before Lantern Rite, I met an old friend. Thanks to his help, things have been a lot more stable than before. I'm going to assume he's talking about Zhongli. It's good to hear. Give everything you don't eat to Paimon. <laughs> an old friend. You should know him. He's... Oh, Venny! The wind? Seeds of story. Hey, by the let's go! Uh, did Paimon just unconsciously <laughs> complete that thing? Consciously, but yeah. Voice. Subconsciously. Could it be? It must be! Oh, this is gonna be weird, dude. This is gonna be weird. Hold on, because Zhongli... Oh, mm -hmm. God, this is gonna be weird. If I'm not mistaken, there's <sighs> someone knocking at the door. Yeah. Uh, don't just sit there, Zhongli. Go welcome our guest in. Oh, God. No such need. I'm coming in. I'm nervous. The door to the restaurant gets blown open by a gust of wind again. Is he pissed? I think he's drunk. <laughs> finally let me in. What? Hello, hello. No matter if we've met before or not, this moment marks a brand new encounter. Old friends and new, happy lantern right. Happy lantern right, oh, Venti. It's the tone deaf bard. Yep. Huh? Huh? Uh. Oh. <laughs> he seems to carry a valiant breeze wherever he goes. It looks like we're going to be friends. Fate has brought us together, so come on, take a seat, and be my guest. 
Help yourself. Oh, I'll ask them for another set of cutlery. Mm-hmm. This young lady here is as bright as a fresh bouquet of flowers in the morning's rising sun. She no doubt is the one with the most authority here. Okay, dude. <laughs> Whoa, these I mean... look amazing. <sighs> is it really okay for me to join in? <laughs> All right, I'm digging in. Huh, it's you. Oh, oh yeah, they've met. This Genu. What? What? No, it's mm -hmm. Genu. <laughs> okay. He's gonna give Sigil's pen name away. <laughs> oh God, the Iridori flashbacks. Uh, yep. Now that I've taken a closer look, you're a fan of Genu's works, aren't you? Mm -hmm. I met Sing Cho at a light novel convention. Oh, how I wish we'd met sooner. Aww. I never expected that there'd be another person in this world who could interpret Genu's new novel as thoroughly as I could. Venti, you're being too humble. Considering your poetic talent, your fundamentals are way more impressive. Cute, damn. <clears throat> could this new guest be Master Sing Cho's friend? Uh, he's my old pal too. Looks like Xiao knows him too. No, he's my old pal too. Yeah! Xiao, you remember me too, right? We had a chat not long ago. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> Monsters become more active than usual as we get closer to Lantern. Dude, right? this is so weird. I was patrolling Dihua Marsh a few days ago when I happened to run into this... this... Hmm? You've already <sighs> forgotten? I'm a bard, remember? And bards go around singing wherever they like. Uh-huh. Oh, right. And this bard was performing in Dihua Marsh. It was a moving melody. And it made me feel relaxed and at ease. I couldn't help but stay and listen. <laughs> Thank you for your patronage. So that's how it was. I see. I understand now, too. I'm glad someone does. I'm Zhong Li. Currently working at the Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor. It's a pleasure to meet you, new friend. Mm hmm. And I'm his boss. Oh, and if there's anything unsatisfactory, let me know anytime. That's very considerate of you. Mm hmm. Uh -huh. Something weird, dude. No wonder. Only a boss as savvy and reliable as you would be able to hire such an impressive consultant. <laughs> oh, you're too nice, Venti. Not to brag, but our consultant truly is impressive. His knowledge extends across the stars in the land, and there's nothing throughout history that he doesn't know. Uh-huh. From the sophisticated way he speaks, it's hard not to suspect that he could very well be an adeptus in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're an adeptus. Do you think oh. it might be possible? I... Sorry. I'm only good at conquering demons. I'm afraid I don't have much knowledge in that matter. Uh, really? Oh god, dude. This is so... I... I kind of thinks you're super knowledgeable. Five on play along. Oh, that's sus luck. This is so... I, I don't know how to describe this. It's not really cringe. It is very fucking awkward. And I kind of want to sit with, like, my head in my hands around this dinner table, you know? Like, I just want to be a fly on the wall. Huh? doesn't come to the city very often, so it's, uh, pretty normal for him to not know anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Eh? Really? I've actually heard a few things about Mr. Zhongli before. The guests in the tavern talked about this refined and courteous man who, instead of having wine at Mondstadt's finest tavern, ordered a cup of hot tea with the most complex name. Now that you mention it, I seem to recall that there indeed is a musician like yourself in Mondstadt. I've heard that he's elegant and amiable, his works witty and vibrant. Yeah. It's no overstatement to regard him as the best bard in Mondstadt. I wonder who that could be. <laughs> now you're making me embarrassed. Me too, please stop. I would say that Mondstadt's poetry is a little run-of-the-mill sometimes. There's one I heard a while back that went... <clears throat> The old house is renewed, welcoming the spring breeze, awakening old memories. 
The meaning's there, but the word choices are unimaginative, and there's a distinct lack of literary flair. Hmm. I think so, too. The composition needs a little jazzing up. Hey, Hutao, listen. Listen. I really liked the rap, okay? But I do think it's best to put that career on hold for a little while until Twitter calmed the fuck down. Mm-hmm. Uh, jazzing up? Maybe, maybe, maybe jangling or something? If I were to give it a go, I'd make it... Or Zinyan even, or Barbara? An old melon on a vine, a new flower that grows fine. Oh, good one! It feels unique and has a nice ring to it. What does that mean? You have great taste, Bendy. I was right about you. Let's shake hands. Of course, of course. Hmm. Hmm. Uh. Hey, Shincho. Hey! <laughs> Mind lending me a few books when we get back? Pick out some well-written ones. I don't know if it's my own lack of literary knowledge, but I couldn't tell the difference between those two. I don't think it's your fault. <laughs> Zhang Yun's right. It's not our fault. That's, you know... That's a lot of text to put in one thing, and it's so tiny. Paimon, watch and learn from Hu Tao and Venti. This'll come in handy for your ugly nicknames. Oh, you have a point. But speaking of, why is it tone deaf bard here? Are you here to take part in Lantern Rite 2? You're gonna sing another song? I heard that Liyue will be hosting a Lantern Rite music festival this year. As a musician myself, how could I possibly resist the temptation to come take a look? <laughs> or a listen. Fair. Getting to know other musical styles is essential to sparking inspiration, don't you think? Ah, uh, but the music festival wasn't planned beforehand. Yeah, come on. Come on. Ether, my man, my bro, my dude. It like, you think half the ship was that Venti takes part in? You haven't realized that yet? As for the Fontaine friend who hosted the festival, I saw him near Stone Gate the other day. The Iridescence tour has finally been held successfully for once, so I had to congratulate him. Thank you, he must feel very grateful. <laughs> Don't think anything of it. By the way, I was watching as you entered Shinue Kiosk. But no one seemed to notice me. Oh? Should I say that it's because I'm an expert in hiding, or that a certain someone deliberately ignored the sound of the wind? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever Lantern Rite comes around, Liyue Harbor becomes bustling with activity. <laughs> People are all busy watching the lanterns and strolling around the shops, and they might just go travel somewhere on a whim. It is rather <laughs> difficult to predict another's whereabouts. Okay, so they know. <laughs> the festival is in full swing and proceeding smoothly. And we're all gathered here with friends, new and old. This is no doubt a wonderful occasion worth celebrating. To come together with all of you at the beginning of the year, one can't help but be filled with joy. Aww. In a moment like this, I propose we raise a glass together. In my case, tea in lieu of wine. Ah. Uh. Huh? Very well said, Mr. Zhongli. That was exactly what I wanted to say. Uh, now I'm getting a little self-conscious. I didn't cause you too much trouble barging in like that, did I? We usually drink wine during occasions like this over in Mondstadt, but since Mr. Zhongli insists on drinking tea, I'll give a toast with tea too. Aww. Everyone. Thanks for the treat. That's cute. You're here, welcome. As the host of this gathering, I hope everyone enjoys the food and drinks. May this year be better than the last. Considering that everyone may have other matters to attend to later, sticking to tea seems like a good idea. Uh. Uh. All of a sudden, they started proposing toast. Should, should we? We should stare at Zhao and make this as uncomfortable as possible. What the? Why am I inside Venti? <laughs> Why did you out like that? Zhao! What's with the urgency? Are you done eating? Want to head out for a walk? <sighs> sure. Have you two finished eating? Apparently. It's always nice to have a breath of fresh air after a meal. Helps with digestion. Um, I... Uh... Oh, you're still hungry, right? Ooh. Uh, yeah? Don't worry, we'll be back soon. Okay, then. Don't forget to come back. Uh, so.
sus. Oh, 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 oh. Go. It seems like our new friend is an expert in wine. Ah, yes, new friend. I deserve no such praise. I only drink for fun. It's nothing compared to your expertise. Mm. I'm glad we're only having tea today. What if I got drunk and said something nonsensical? I'd surely become an object of ridicule to someone I've just met. No such thing. I wouldn't dare disrespect the director's guest. <laughs> Dude, the sort of shade is insane. Oh my god. Wait, we can talk to Paimon. Okay. You're not allowed to leave Paimon here alone. Yes, I fucking am. To be honest, Paimon's worried about saying the wrong thing. Oh, that's kind of cute. Did you talk about anything interesting before we started the meal? Anything fun I missed out on? Oh, we were talking about cooking. Mr. Zhongli told us that he went on a trip to Chaoyang Village the other day and got a hold of some uncommon ingredients. Oh. Tea seed oil and sesame oil. He suggested I try using those in my new dishes. The tea village, oh. right? No wonder he left his post for so long that day. Those ingredients would be difficult for anyone else to find. Hell yeah, dude. I guess I'll need his help next time as well. I mean, they've been teasing us since, uh, uh, what's his name told us about the, the Xiaoying village, the tea place. What was his name? Lieben. Um, he said it was like this direction-ish, I think, and I reckon if it's there, it could easily lead to Fontaine. Yeah, Lieben, the sussy backer. Okay. About you and Venti. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Could he be a partner in your family business? What? That's right. You know how my family is. A lot of business secrets can't just be divulged at the dinner table. Ah, just as I thought. What a weird interaction. <laughs> Let's depart. You go ahead. Lament. Xiao, listen, I love Xiao, I really do in the story, but you, like, uh, maybe after this you can talk more instead of just making awkward noises, because uh, the minute it's like, uh, eh, huh, ooh, lament, he's <laughs> just shy, ooh, ooh, I mean, maybe. Are you alright? Yes. Oh, I should be the one asking you that. <laughs> I, it's hard to describe. Unfamiliar with gatherings like this? It's not that. What is it? There were those among the Adepti who loved gatherings and idle chit-chat. No time for Sometimes idle chit-chat. Sometimes they would call up a few others for a drink. Even I got dragged along to their gatherings many times. Okay. The Adepti all have their specialties, making most of them proud and arrogant. Everything they say is straight from the heart. It never gets too complicated. Uh-huh. But this time... This time? Oh. <laughs> oh. Can I have a third option for both of them? Because I feel like it is both of them, dude. I'm going to say Venny's fault. No, no. <laughs> I didn't mean that. I don't, I... So you know his true identity. Yeah. I'll get straight to the point then. <laughs> the Animo Archon is a free spirit. And his temperament is as carefree as the music he plays on the flute. It's easy for a god like him to live in harmony with humans. Aww. And that's something I might never be able to do. You don't have to be like them. You do you. Hmm. That does sound like something you would say. No matter. What? I know my circumstances. What does that mean? Mister? Huh? Whenever I think of the ordinary conversations I've had with you, it feels strangely novel. Strange in a good way? Novel in a good way? This sounds like an insult. Yes. Oh. The parlor director went out of her way with the invitation, so it was difficult to turn her down. I had made mental preparations before agreeing to come. She told me that all the guests today would be acquainted with elemental power. Mm. And I knew that you would be here, but I didn't expect the other guests to be... No one would have guessed. I didn't fucking guess. General Capice has always said that we should live in the present and enjoy every pleasant surprise. Perhaps that's what I should do with what I'm feeling now. Hmm. But I think he meant designing clothes for those around him. The clothes oh. were intricately designed, but inconvenient to wear. 
Brother Bosatius never tried to hide his distaste in front of him. Oh. Rex Lapis did like his designs and even collected quite a few. Can we get them? The outfit he wears now was also designed by General Capesis himself. Yeah, can we bring Capesis back so we could design some good fucking skins? Because that'd be kind of pog. I never saw him wear this during the war. I didn't expect him to start wearing it later. Mm. Oh, here you are. Hi, Zhengling. Um, I'm not intruding, right? No, you are. <laughs> Came out not. for a reason. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> like... uh, hotel saw that everyone's done eating and asked the staff to bring out the desserts. Paimon got so anxious that you weren't back yet that she scarfed down her dessert without the usual slurping and munching. But not so anxious that she can't eat. Sounds like she'll be okay. And to be honest, I was kind of worried too. We're having a chat outside. What's to worry you about? I was restless just now, and I thought you weren't used to the food here, and was planning to head back to Wangshu Inn for something Yan Chao made. You're worrying too much. Yeah. Xiao, don't pull any... L lament on us. Why would I? I don't fucking know. I couldn't even read it, dude. Anyway, let's head back. Um, please wait. There's another reason why I came looking for you. Here, take these. I brought them for you. <gasps> Edibles? Almond tofu? <laughs> yup. Fair, he does like almond tofu. Since the Masterful Chef's competition, you could say that Yan Xiao and I are not only competitors, but good friends as well. I visit him at Wang Xuan sometimes to discuss our cooking. Don't question it, chat. You know the adept I like edibles. We saw Cloud Retainer earlier. I heard him say that the esteemed guest on the roof loves nothing more than a good plate of almond tofu. Hmm. So I learned a thing or two about the dish from him. Oh, that's and cute. To be honest, before Hu Tao invited everyone, she secretly came looking for me, told me about the guest she planned to invite, and asked me for some suggestions on what she should order. So I made a few servings of almond tofu for you guys in advance. Take them as a token of gratitude for your support. That's very cute. When I told Globa that I was making these for you, he started eagerly running around the kitchen and helping a lot too. Thank you, Zhengling and Globa. Thank you for the trouble. There was no need to. Uh -huh. I'll take them. <laughs> Thank you. And Globa too. You're welcome. Oh. oh, the almond tofu I made probably tastes and feels a little different from the type Yan Xiao cooks. Oh? Please let me know if there's any improvements I should make. Okay. <laughs> That's all. Alrighty, we should head back now. We can't keep Paimon waiting. True. She is getting impatient. Oh, God. Hi, Paimon. Uh, you're finally done whispering secrets to each other? Yes. So much for promising Paimon you'll be back soon. <laughs> I was! We were pretty quick, and you were only angry because you have no sense of time. Interesting. <laughs> How could you say that to Paimon? How could you say that to Paimon? In that case, hmm. besides having no sense of time, Paimon will let you know what having no sense of fullness looks like. Oh? Your dessert is all Paimon's. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry to keep everyone waiting. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Oh, she pissed. No worries. We're all just chatting here. There's no serious business to take care of. Whether we're chatting outside or inside, it's all the same. Strive to be more like you, Tao, Paimon. Hmm. Paimon's too busy eating to talk to you. But even though we're all well acquainted by now, I think this festive gathering deserves something ceremonious. Oh? Is this some local custom? Hmm. Nope. <laughs> This is something I made up so that good luck will be on our side. That's all. <laughs> nope. Spontaneity is the best choice to make here. Um, let's use this incense burner on the table. It's been lit for so long now that the incense is running out. I'll leave refilling and lighting the incense to the most distinguished guest among us all. Zhongli. Lighting the incense will signify continuous growth and prosperity in all our endeavors in the new year. I see. Perfect symbolism, as expected of Hu Tao. Aww. And speaking of the most distinguished guest here today, I'm sure we all agree that it's Mr. Zhang Li. Oh. I'm not very familiar with the details of his past deeds, <laughs> but chatting with him has been a real eye-opener, even for a bard who has traveled all across the world. 
That looked very, uh, what's that? What? A Ace Attorney, that's it. Yeah, very Ace Attorney. If knowledge were a form of power, one could even say that you're a wielder of unlimited strength. It is true. But when it comes to having a way with words, the notable bard is certainly one cut above the rest. I just happen to have a good memory. It is such an unexceptional skill, yet you made it sound like an unparalleled talent. Mm. I am truly impressed. Since we all get to nominate someone... Nominate Zhao! Nominate Zhao! Fuck you, Paimon. Mm -hmm. I think it's only fair that we let the parlor director light the incense. That's also cute. Huh? That won't do. Don't flatter me just because I'm your boss. We are looking for the most distinguished guest here. As the host, I shouldn't be involved in this discussion at all. Now that we've enjoyed this table full of delicacies, how about we let our one and only chef here do the honors? Oh, God. Um, is this really the way this works? I didn't cook any of these dishes. It's not a big deal. Just look at her. Xiang Ling, the disciple of an adeptus, the stove god's best companion, the winner of the Masterful <laughs> Chef's competition. The only heir of the famous Wadi restaurant. A good old friend of mine. There's no better choice. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, why does Paimon feel like we're back at square one again? Square zero. Please stop. You're making me embarrassed. <laughs> if we're looking for a distinguished guest, surely the second son of the Fayum Commerce Guild counts. Oh, my it's God. One of the largest Commerce Guilds in Iowa Harbor. Just all fucking light it, dude. Jesus. Huh? Don't get me involved in this. Oh, not a bad choice. With the Commerce Guild's young master lighting the incense, we're all sure to make a huge sum of mora in the new year. Oh, true. That's not how it works. Fair. Making a fortune is indeed a fine wish, but it's of lesser importance than good health and happiness. True. Which means we should choose Chong oh. Yun, the skilled exorcist who keeps everyone's home safe from evil spirits. I'm eating cake. Uh huh? I don't want cake. Now you're nominating me? Kidding. I can't be the one when we have the Conqueror of Demons right here. I mean, you're such two archons! It doesn't matter. The Shao has the most seniority among everyone here today. We should... I refuse. Same. I am most certainly not the most distinguished guest here. Is he going to say it's Zhongli? No, he's probably going to say it's the fucking Traveler so that everybody gets picked at least once. You should all be able to make the right judgment based on your observations. Wait, don't, yep. One person here is well acquainted with everyone else. Paimon. Paimon. Okay, Chongyin, don't give me those fucking eyes like everyone else. Come oh, on. Oh, that's right. Even though you're always mocking Paimon, you're still pretty popular with other people. No, wait. Paimon said she wouldn't talk to you again. I'm not the only well-connected person here, though. Huh? Who else is there? You! Take a look in the mirror. Huh? Huh? Does that mean Paimon's the most distinguished guest? Cute, but don't let it go to your head. Oh, well, that was unexpected! <laughs> I agree. Paimon's just the one we need. Oh. Without a friend constantly by your side, a long journey would become dreadfully lonesome. Oh, Benny, no. I'm getting flashbacks. That lying, dude. Oh, sus. It's not sus. It's, it just reminds me of his past. Cute, but sus? I don't think it's sus. I think he's just remembering the, the bard. But once you have someone there to brighten up the atmosphere, oh. everything along the way will become lively and vibrant, too. Ah. Ah. The Traveler has traversed many nations, and left behind a great deal of fascinating stories. But without Paimon, they would have become quite monotonous. The fuck you mean? Without Paimon, we would have become quite monotonous. We would have spoken more than five words, Zhongli! Paimon plays an indispensable role in making your journey a happy and smooth one. I'm screenshotting this. Just... So I can post it on Twitter. How to divide the opinion of the Genshin community in one sentence. I like Paimon for the most part. I really do. But uh, that is uh, that is that is that is one thing. 
Paimon is cool. I like Paimon. She can be annoying as fuck sometimes, but uh, I actually quite like her. Okay, interesting line to say though, <laughs> knowing half of Twitter don't. <laughs> Compliments, right? Of course, you're the best travel companion ever. Thank you. You made Paimon wait for a long time, but Paimon's not mad anymore. Oh. Don't take everything to heart, Paimon. Friends tease each other all the time. <laughs> hmm. That is indeed true. <laughs> that means Paimon is as important to the traveler as Guova is to me. True. Looks like we've come to an agreement. Also Any sus. Any objections before we proceed? True and sus. Maybe Paimon is a guova version of someone else. I trust the traveler's judgment. Yeah, you hey, should. Paimon it is. Paimon light it. And now, the world's most excellent traveler's greatest companion, guide, and friend. Paimon will be refilling and lighting the incense for us. Hmm. Here you go. Take the match. And uh, don't burn yourself. But if things go really wrong, here's the two-for-one coupon. Oh my god, Hu Tao. Amidst everyone's laughter and applause, Paimon clumsily lights the incense. <laughs> Whew. You all have a relaxed heart-to-heart -heart chat all the way until nightfall. I want to see that. Now that everyone's had the fill of delicious food and tea, it's time to say goodbye. No, I don't want to say goodbye, dude. This is cute. God damn it. I like this. Oh. oh it's getting late. I won't take up any more of your time. You're all free to go as you please. Uh, the food and desserts were delicious. Thanks for the treat, director. Yep, the tea was amazing too. You don't have to go all polite on me. Just remember to come when I invite you next time. I love Hu Tao. I have a feeling she'd get along with Klee very well. Oh my fucking god, dude. Klee wants to go fish blasting with bombs. That's okay, Klee. You can go fish blasting. Just take this two for one coupon in case you kill anyone else on your journey. Come the fuck on, dude. Oh my god, that'd be terrifying. That'd be worse than Klee and Yoimiya. Hmm, let's see. It's dark out. Oh god. So I'm going to accompany Xiang Ling, Sing Cho, and Chang Yun back home. As for the rest of the guests, I'll leave them to our consultant. No. No need. I'm headed towards the harbor to meet a friend on the ship. There's no need to trouble one such as Mr. Zhang Li. I think you know the place I'm talking about. Come meet me anytime. I will. It was great getting to know you all. Let's meet again when the spring breeze begins to blow. Okay. Bye. We should write poetry together sometime. Oh, God. That'd be very cool to see, actually. We'll catch you all later, then. Bye. Don't forget to return to the parlor later. There's something I need you to do. Wait, me or Zhongli? Understood. Okay. See you later. Good shit. Bye. <sighs> well, then. Rex Lapis. Just Zhongli will do. I live as a mortal in Liu Harbor now. No. I am just one among many who begin work at sunrise and retire to rest at sundown. Cute. If we were to consider status and seniority as Zhongli, I should be respectfully referring to you as Adeptus Xiao. Ugh. Heaven forbid. Adeptus Xiao. <laughs> yeah. Not you too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I meant what I said. I heard that during the Lantern Rite Music Festival, you conferred with Streetward Rambler and Cloud Retainer. Hmm. I take it as you've gained a lot more knowledge about the past? A lot. The same truth will sound different coming from different people. As more bear witness to a story, feelings and interpretations expand in variety too. I once had a pleasant chat about the past and present with a Sumeru scholar named Soraya, and learned a few things about her research topic. From the evidence she found and the conclusion she made, her area of research is already very close to the truth. Wait, we know Soraya. But there are multiple sides to humans and gods alike. Oh, wow. In the legends recorded by humans, some gods were depicted as arrogant and condescending, while others were kind and capable. But whether to me 
Streetward Rambler, Cloud Retainer, or younger Adepti such as Shao and Ganyu. Those Adepti and gods that may seem extraordinary to humans are something more akin to close companions. This was as true back then as it is right now. Just as Shao may seem unapproachable to most, but the Traveler has proved otherwise. True. So there's no need to dwell too much on certain things. Rex La... <clears throat> I mean... Zhang Li, what you're saying is... It looks like you understood what I meant. <laughs> ah. He's just asking for the clarification. Asked me to accompany you on your return. But I don't think you'll need my protection. I'll be taking a walk around and admiring the night scenery. Huh. After that, it'll be time for me to go back and meet up with the director. Goodbye for now. Interesting. Bye, Zhang Li. Bye. Everyone's gone now. Yeah, it's just us. Paimon always feels a little empty inside when a lively celebration ends. Oh. Like, at least you always stay by Paimon's side. No, no, no. Paimon got it mixed up. Paimon, the best and most distinguished travel guide, will always stay by your side, traveler. It's my honor. I'm afraid there'll be a lot to ask of you in the future, too, most distinguished Paimon. Oh, Hoyaverse, you saucy fuckers. Oh, you're so suspicious. Good that you are aware of that. Oh, come on. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to do? We could take you on a tour of Leela Harbor. That's no just need. screaming in the fucking face. Yes, we're foreshadowing. For Please pick up on expected. it. The city lights are a fine sight, but it's time for me to leave. Bye. The event <laughs> today occurred so abruptly. I appreciate your kindness. <sighs> the feeling's mutual. You don't have to thank me every time. Okay. I'll see you next time then. See you soon. Oh, yep. Yeah, nobody saw that, right? Yep. Yeah, nobody saw that. Um. Uh. Jesus Christ. Uh, wait, that's not the quest. Oh, that, that was the quest then. This is such a cool ship. It is pretty good. Facing the sea breeze and gazing out at the soaring seagulls. Oh, makes me want to sing out loud. Sing. Kazwa, how about I stay here and be the ship's resident bard? What are my prospects? <laughs> With your level of artistic finesse, I'm sure nothing will go wrong. Oh, God. But I'm afraid the sailors aboard are not the most versed in the arts. They probably wouldn't understand the deeper meaning your poetry holds. Oh, true. They want the sea shanties. <laughs> you can't say that for sure. Poetry is spur of the moment creations. Anyone viewing the same sights and experiencing the same atmosphere would surely understand. <sighs> There's a port in Mondstadt, too. Ooh. But I rarely get the chance to board any of the ships. Hopefully soon. Speaking of ships. Everything's perfect about this one, except... Except mm. what? Um, Kozua, could uh? you tell your captain that my height says nothing of my age? <laughs> I'm at way past drinking age. How often does one get to enjoy a seafood feast on a ship? Uh, it'll be a real shame if there isn't anything Christ. stronger to enhance the food. Pretty please? There's not much I can do about that. It's not because Captain Beto's not on the ship right now, but because there's no room for negotiation on this matter. Even I have to sit in the no drinking room every time. <laughs> uh, but I don't get drunk after just a few sips. Trust me, I can hold my liquor really well. Seems like it. It's like a literal addict, dude. Oh my god. Oh, Jean wait, Shongli and Guava. The vegetables are fresh. And there are enough wheats and greens stocked up. I'll pass on the seafood. Uh. Oh, it's you. We meet again. <laughs> Surprised to see me here? It's the director's orders. Xiongling worked all day and night at the restaurant during the festival and didn't get to have any time to enjoy the festivities. The director sent me here to help out in the kitchen so that Xiongling will have some time to herself. But with someone as hardworking as you around, there seems to be nothing much for me to do. True. It feels good seeing my old friend in the kitchen, fetching ingredients and lighting fires. 
Perhaps I should borrow Cloud Retainer's Supreme Cuisine Machine. Oh my god, yes. To speed things up. Please do. Ah. You'd still prefer to make them by hand. But of course. You speak Gorba? Sick. Because I remember Yan Fei was here last time. Ning Wang and Beidou this time. Okay. Hey, don't tell me you called me over for just a game of chess. Ah. You have to be more specific, Captain Beto. Is it that you find playing chess an uninteresting activity, or that you're unhappy about my lack of novel ideas? If you don't specify what you mean, how could I know what I should do to please you? <laughs> of course. I make a single remark and you reply with a full-blown lecture. Maybe we should deal with all official affairs publicly in the future. It might just make things easier. I'd be perfectly happy with that. I'm just worried that Captain Beto's business might be negatively affected. They're talking about chess, right? <laughs> this sounds very on the nose. We're still not gonna say it, but you know. <laughs> Don't give me that. Oof. That woman from Yenshang Tea House sometimes comes aboard to ask for information. She requested the fleet to import some goods, but how could I not know who she's actually working for? Oh. <laughs> You sure know a lot, Captain Beto. How about I ask her to come over? Or maybe we go straight to her tea house. With one more person around, we'll be able to have some variety in our chess games. I hope that that would be less of a bore to you. Us. So, we're still gonna play chess after all. But... Uh... 